Okay, guys, we are live. So for those listening at home, welcome to the Dungeon Musings YouTube channel. My name is Kevin Madison, and I will be your, I guess, your game master today. Because today we are taking a break from our usual suite of games, and we are going to be doing something a little different. Um, it's actually a little bit of revisiting an old favorite, and revisiting also a recurring favorite on the channel. A game that I keep saying every time I run it that I love the game, and then I subsequently forget about it until I plan one of these one-shots again. Today, we are going to be playing Savage Worlds, the Adventure Edition. Now, my camera's backwards because I'm a dumbass, so uh, just be aware that <laughs> this is backwards. But Savage Worlds uh, Adventure Edition, and we are playing in the world of Palladium Books' classic, Wacko Post-Apocalyptic Rifts. And with me today are the stars of the uh, one-shot we're playing today, the Demons in the Dark Woods. Uh, I'll go the order I've got you guys on the screen here. Why don't you tell us who you are, who you're playing, and what is your experience with Rifts or uh, Savage Worlds? Uh, so uh, first up, we've got George. Hey, I am George. I'm playing Brandon Krauss, who is a human ley line walker, so a manipulator of the magical energies that are crisscrossing uh, the planet. Um, and my experience level with both is very limited. Uh, so uh, I I've played Deadlands, for example, but I have not played Savage Worlds on its own. And I haven't, especially not, I played Adventure's Edition. So, and Rifts I've owned forever, but I've never gotten a chance to play at the table. So I'm excited to do both. Awesome. Uh, next up is Brent. Hey, uh, I'm Brent, and I am playing Long Walker, uh, who is a juicer. And a uh, juicer is sort of like someone who's gotten the Captain America Super Serum, except this Super Serum uh, continuously has to be pumped through your body, uh, just kind of like a narcotic, and is really hard on your body, and it will kill you after about five or six years. So they're sort of super soldiers uh with a limited lifespan yep the uh i feel like a uh something about uh, the candle that burns twice as bright burns half as long quote is appropriate with them and is <laughs> yeah. likely in the in the mind of the creator uh and what's and, your experience with the uh, riffs friend um like george i've i've owned riffs uh forever since it first came out uh in palladium but i've only had a limited experience uh playing or running the palladium system uh in riffs just a few times and Savage Worlds, I've played the system a few times. This is my first time, I think, playing the Adventures Edition and my first time uh, playing Savage Rifts. And usually I lean towards Spellcaster, so this is uh, first time as a juicer, which uh, will be fun. Awesome. So it's funny, Brent, because I, uh, Brent and I have known each other for fucking ever, like since grade two or three or something. And we, uh, I remember when Brent, because we were friends of, of Palladium because of the Robotech game. And I remember when you came home with the Sabbath, with the uh, Riffs book, and it fucking blew our minds. <laughs> that crazy yeah, that was and... great. Yeah, I um, I saw it at a cousin. My cousin was into gaming, and he had it. And I was at his house one day, and I'm like, "What is this? What is this glitter boy thing? And why does it like? Why can it take so much more damage and do more damage than anything else?" And then yeah. I looked at, you know, like Cyber Knights, which were obviously like Jedi, but like souped up. And I'm like, "This is cool." Well, and for, for me too, like the art's always been a big thing for, for role-playing games. And uh, the Kevin Long art uh, was just so iconic. He did the art in the uh, a bunch of their other games as well too. But the Kevin Long art in the Rift's core rulebook is just, fuck, like yeah, his clean lines and the perfect inking would just, um, you know, it just solidified what that game would look like in my mind forever. So that is awesome. So um, last but certainly not least is Jeffrey. Hi everybody, I'm Jeff, and today I'm going to be playing Lady Serena Alderbrandt. She is a um, a cyber knight, uh, which is sort of a psychic um, warrior, and uh, she's a bit of a famous cyber knight, kind of. She's um, been working with the leader of the organization for many years, and... Uh, there's sort of a video of her that surfaced of her singing as she was leading some refugees and it became a bit of a sort of world uh, famous little video that lots of people have seen. So she's got a known personality. Mm -hmm. So um, guys, the one thing with, with riffs is that like it has something ridiculous. 
like 30 to 50 books out in the uh, for under the Palladium line, and there's a huge amount of books in this as well too. It's an enormously diverse world, but what I want to try and do is just boil down the important stuff you need to know for today to understand where we what brings us here. So. 300, and I really should have written something down instead of just ad-libbing, but whatever. When has that ever stopped me from <laughs> trying? <laughs> 350 years ago, the world stood in a golden age. Uh, the highest level of uh, wealth, the highest level of um, uh, life-affirming and life-enabling uh, um, uh, in uh, technologies uh, were dominant, and peace and prosperity reigned across the entire globe. And something then changed. Uh, it's not clear what the actual conflict was, uh, but a spark beget a flame beget an inferno. And the world was consumed uh, in conflict. In the 400 or so years since the end of the world, it, uh, it's been lost what the initial um, weapons were used, whether they were nuclear, whether they were something other, uh, but what the world learned uh, was two things. Uh, one thing, I'm telling the mana, come on. One of them was how fast things can be lost uh, because it was a matter of years uh, and then it was a matter of days when things got even worse and it was a matter of hours before things got to the cataclysmic level. The other thing they learned was that magic uh, so often uh, thought of as superstition or um, something that uh, ignorance or the religious, overly religious, uh, were would embrace, was very, very real. And as those first weapons of mass destruction annihilated entire cities, entire communities, the psychic potential energy of all of those living souls dying at once added to the conflagration caused by those destructive weapons, causing not only further physical devastation, but wrecking catastrophic changes on the world, on the very land, the weather systems, even gaps between this world and others. That fed into it, that fed into more destructive weaponry being used until the entire world was engulfed in this and underwent a cataclysmic uh, transformation. The world that we are playing in is that which has come out of the ashes. Rifts is not really a post-apocalyptic game. It's something that I think the uh, Savage Rifts game does a really good job of pointing out. It is a post-apocalyptic -post game. There are civilizations that have come out of this in the last 350 years in North America, where our campaign is set, life has begun to return. It doesn't mean that the world is free of conflict or danger. It means that the dark ages of a post-apocalyptic world where supernatural threats and supernatural threats and supernatural intelligence is sort of the world, the word that um, uh, that uh, Riffs often used to describe the, the evil things, but it's worth realizing that what they mean is something much worse, something that has the unknowable quality of the Lovecraftian myths, but with the gothic cruelty of gothic horror monsters. Um, that's what f spread across the earth, and that's also partly an explanation for why uh, the vast majority of North America is dominated by the powerful factions uh, that it is. It's because stability and even at the cost of a boot on your neck is sometimes preferable to dying in the dark to the terrors of the night. Where our story opens, there are two main factions that will be uh, at play. One of these is a fascistic and humanocentric uh, collection of uh, different states that have allied together in a coalition. And they call themselves the Coalition States, or the CS. This gives you an idea of what their forces. The Coalition States have some of the most advanced technology 
Uh, they uh, are happy to bend uh, certain unfavorable assets like psychics or mutant animals uh, to their end. But they are an empire that puts humanity first. And I say empire correctly. It is ruled by an emperor, Emperor Prosek. A bitter rival of theirs is the Federation of Magic. And the Federation of Magic puts on the face of, at times, benevolent spellcasters who see nothing wrong with making use of the same powers that led to such devastation. The high technology weapons, they're the ones that set the spark, but it is the return of the psychic magical power that has caused so much devastation across rifts. And those like Brandon, who know better, know that there is dark secrets behind the Federation of Magic. Federation of Magic and the Coalition of Fought Wars. And the there are other factions within North America, but those are really the only ones we need to focus on right now. Because that's the two titanic forces that your folk have been squeezed between. Roughly uh, a little more than a year ago, the conflict between a free, uh, uh, it's not really, I mean, it's more like a city-state called Tolkien. Uh, it fell. It unfortunately picked a fight with the coalition states and it lost. And to add to the the devastation or the cost of the loss, it also lost some of its soul. Because in an effort to try and win the war, they turned to the same kinds of darkened magics that have corrupted the Federation of Magic. Tolkien up to that point had assiduously kept itself free of that kind of influence. But out of that loss has come a new hope. One of the surviving heroes and some of the others, but in particular a cyber knight, a one who's been known for over 100 years now, named Lord Coke. He brought the survivors to a place called Castle Refuge. And there he has formed an organization called the Tomorrow Legion. And the intent for the Tomorrow Legion is to remain true to the principles of Tolkien, to not ally themselves with uh, vicious alien intelligences, to not to welcome uh, members of any and all species, um, to embrace the benefits of technological uh, and magical fusings, and most importantly, to protect the weak. So, guys, all three of you are members of the Tomorrow Legion. And our scene opens with a shot of Castle Refuge. Now, Castle Refuge is, I believe it's Missouri, or what was Missouri, but the maps of North America are dramatically unreliable now. The name Rifts comes from a specific man magical manifestation that happens. The world is now crisscrossed with magical lines of power called ley lines. I mean, ley lines have been around since before, but ley lines now, especially the more powerful ones, can be visible at night, certainly, and even during the day as blue glowing magical energy. Where ley lines meet are nexuses. And at times when power can flux up or can, uh, can peak, they can form a gap or open a space between this dimension, the world of post-apocalypse rifts Earth, and other countless worlds. Those are called rifts. Rifts can have friendly, benevolent things come through, like Lord Coke. Lord Coke is not from this world. He came from another, passed through a gap in space and time. But it can also be the source of terrible and horrible creatures. Um, one such creature is the Zidikix, this terrifying expansionist um, genocidal uh, bug species 
that has almost completely taken over Western Canada and spreading down into the Western United States as well. Um, Castle Refuge, fortunately, is a is as you know lives up to its namesake as a bit of a refuge. Uh, you can see faces of all sorts of different every um, ethnicity of, of humankind can be found here. Um, every um, they call them DBs, uh, dimensional beings. It's sort of the the go to word for anything that's not from Earth. And DBs can include things like the um, uh, elves from you know myth, uh, dwarves, um, air, type, types of uh, supernatural spirits. But it can also be some of the more unusual things, like the I think they're called the Fanondi, which are cactus folk, people who appear to be living cactus creatures. Um, Castle Refuge is a welcome place for all. Probably next to humans, the next biggest population is dwarves because there is a contingent of dwarven techno-wizards, smiths who fuse magic and technology to build this place. So funny by line as well too, I, from what I understand, Castle Refuge, as it appears in the picture, does not exist, but there is something similar that some group of people are building in the middle of Midwestern US. And that's why they picked this as a kind of a happy coincidence. Huh. So, what really? we see- That's uh, off to Google that now. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It, it was, when they were doing the Kickstarter, I saw that mentioned at one point. I was like, oh God, that's really cool. Um, so guys, what you, our scene opens with is we see uh, Lady S uh, Serena making her way through the halls. And she is dressed as she always is. Do I have this on the right layer here? Yep, I do. Okay, good. Let me put your tokens down again, guys. What you see is uh, Lady Serena, or Serena. How do you want to pronounce it, Jeff? Serena, Serena? Serena. Serena, okay. Yeah. She is making her way through the halls of Castle Refuge. And you meet, you're passing by a bunch of um, uh, Cyber Knight squires, things that have not had, you know, developed their magical power or their psionic powers yet. Um, or have the uh, cybernetic armor implanted that is uh, part of uh, becoming a knight. Um, the cyber knights uh, are like, you know, uh, freelances of old. Uh, they are champions in the in the world. Um, the they are venerated by those who the cyber knights would protect, and they are vilified by the enemies of free peoples. So the uh, Federation of Magic. Uh, generally do not like the uh, cyber knights and the coalition states have a shoot on uh, you know shoot on sight order with them um, their psychic powers would likely be enough to put them on that list but the fact that they so regularly stand against the skull icon you know the skull iconography power armor wearing troops that um, it's just when that uh, psi sword appears attention is focused generally on the cyber knights but there are those who, you know, it's many years of training to become a Cyber Knight. And as you walk up towards the grand oaken doors that have been carved by elves who made uh, their home in uh, the community around Castle, Castle Refuge, you see a squire whose hand is sort of gesturing. This kid may be about 13 years old, scrawny, tall. He wears the robes of a, uh, a squire. And you can see him looking at his hand. And there's little sparks of, of uh, bluish energy that are forming. Um, but he hasn't quite, it seems, mastered uh, the ability to summon a uh, Psy Sword, so he doesn't see you approaching whatsoever. Uh, so Lady Serena, as you walk up, this is Lord Coke's um, study. Uh, you are to meet him here. Mm. Okay. And as you walk up, um, you're going to be the first one to be able to, he won't notice you until you make yourself known. Mm. <clears throat> I think I would walk mm. up to him and... Uh, Keep focusing. Huh. You're close. Lady Serena. I, I'm sorry. I I should have been focusing, I know, but I... I and he seems to have completely forgotten what he was going to do or say he is very flustered by uh, your appearance. Uh, not just because you're a, you know, uh, striking uh, young woman. It's also the fact that you're a hero. You are known to be a hero of Tolkien and countless other, um, or the Siege of Tolkien, and countless other 
um, heroic endeavors. Do you have duties you should be attending to, Squire? Uh, yes, lady. I'm. I'm sorry. I, uh, Lord Coke, uh, said to wait inside, and he kind of fumbles with the door. He pulls it. You hear it, the latch click inside. And he opens up the big door for you. Please, please. Uh, Lord Coke will be along momentarily. Thank you. So you make your way inside, and then the door is closed behind you. Now, what you find inside, there's a couple of interesting things. Um, the world of Rifts is a mix of what is new, what is old, what is seemingly impossible. Um, in the center of this room, there is an enormous circular like table, but it's more of like a, a, um, a planning station. Uh, it has a bunch of um, wooden kind of uh, accoutrements on it, but it has that kludge together look that you know only comes from techno wizardry. It is something that is fueled by magical power or psychic power. And it is uh, active right now. And there is displayed over this a display uh, setting out what is thought to be the current map of what was North America. Now keep your tokens a little smaller here, guys, just so you can see it. What you can see on this map is, for one, you see where you are now. Castle Refuge. And the map is centered in the middle for that. There's Castle Refuge. And you can't help but see that Castle Refuge is surrounded on all sides by enemies. The Coalition States of El Dorado, Coalition State Missouri, and the Frontier claimed by the Coalition. In theory, more than in practice. And of course, there is the Federation of Magic. Uh, you've never spent much time in the Federation of Magic, but one of your companions, Brandon, grew up there. And the horrors that he saw there were more than enough to make you realize that though the Coalition would find their ways anathema and an enemy of humankind, they are as much of a threat to not only uh, Castle Refuge and the Cybernet Order, but to all of humanity. Mm -hmm. You also see that there is something pinging down here in the dark woods. Would you give us a common knowledge roll, please? It's one of your skills. Okay, Ooh. so in Rifts, just as a refresher, um, to, uh, to get a success in Rifts, it's very easy. All you need is roll four, uh, four or higher. Uh, on all of your dice rolls, you're going to be rolling a dice and what's called a wild dice. The wild dice will always be a d6. And um, if you roll a four on either of them, then that's good enough. If you uh, roll uh, four over the numbers, if you roll an eight, then that counts as a raise. And uh, if the target number isn't four, like if you're trying to act against something, then it's every four over there gives you a raise. It affects the quality of your success. Usually only once. Uh, there's sometimes things that will, you'll get multiple raises, but a lot of things, once you get a raise, you get a raise and that's it. Um, you have no earthly idea what the marking might be there, um, nor do you have any idea really about the dark woods. Um, right. You know, your campaign has been thus far largely against, uh, or in protection of uh, Tolkien, but... Um, where, uh, what you also see in this, um, uh, in this, uh, uh, study is a collection of the, like, trophies and gifts that have been granted to Lord Coke over time. Uh, there are some, uh, weaponry and some, uh, objects of, uh, um, a type of technology that you're just not familiar with. Uh, there are ancient tomes in here. There are artifacts that look older uh, than, I mean, even than uh, the, that would date well back to the pre rifts time, perhaps even thousands of years older, as well as alien plants and strange crystals that catch light and then give off uh, a small melodic sound. Uh, it speaks to the uh, history uh, behind uh, Lord Coke and, and his long life. 
What is it that you think you're focusing on as Lord Coke uh, steps in? I mean, I think that <clears throat> she's been in his office uh, several times, and so a lot of the stuff she's already seen or spent time admiring or looking at, so probably it's the map that she's uh, drawn to, and especially, like you said, there's something there she's not seen before in the Dark Woods, and so maybe she's just in thought if, about it. If you it. touch it, like if you just put your hand on it, you can move it over and try and like zoom in. Like you can alter the, the map. Yeah, yeah. That's probably what she's doing. She's okay. probably zooming in on the... And you're you're moving it in. And All right, honey. Yeah. <laughs> That's uh, foreshadowing. Yeah, she's warning us. She's like, don't go into the dark woods. <laughs> Do no. not take this mission. <laughs> okay. So the... Uh, I think when you were focused on that when you hear kind of a um, a a voice that has um, like I said deep and rich voice but it has a softness to it it's the kind that fills up a room when it speaks but with a soft and comforting quality to it not the shocking quality mm, and yeah. uh all it says is, so you were drawn to the dark woods. And you look to your left and you see standing there in his full armor is Lord Coke himself. The uh, high, um, I guess the high master of the, uh, uh, of the um, order of the Cyber Knights. Founder, in fact. You've met Lord Coke before? Would I always call him like is like Lord Coke or what's the Most relationship definitely. here? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. You probably would even kneel as a member of the. Yeah. He's not royalty, but he is a superior and he's yeah. the head of the order. Yeah, so I would do that sort of greeting, and uh, then I would sit, stand back up and say, "Yes, I was drawn to this here, Lord Coke, but I can't identify what it is." <laughs> Your instincts. Lady Serena, your instincts have always been good. I'll be quick, because this matter must be addressed quickly. Lady, I know that you are familiar with the name Alicia Verga. And there's a flash. Um, Jeff, you and I talked about this before. So this is someone who you have had a romantic relationship with before. Mm, yes. And this may have been, uh, it's probably going back 10 years, so it's probably when you were a novice in the Cyber Knights and probably when she was a scholar in Tolkien. Beautiful, mm. raven-haired, but always tussled and dirty from digging in old ruins, trying to find knowledge and reading old books and such. What's the memory that flashes to you of your time together? I think that um, I live such a life of duty and, uh, you know, uh, you know, protecting other people and whatnot, that this was sort of a, an indulgent time in her life when she was sort of uh, living for herself a little more. And so um, it's almost like a different sort of happiness, right? Like, you know, there's the servitude happiness that, you know, the fulfillingness of that, but it was sort of that personal serotonin boost of you know just being with someone you love yeah and so i think that maybe even just her name brings that sort of feeling back for sure. her was it you uh was it her or was it both of you that broke things off i think it was just two two separate of life paths that neither of us could step off of yeah too important it and just there got to a point where like after plans kept getting broken by one or both of you that you just stopped making plans and it became a we'll see you when you see and then 10 years passed yeah that sound right okay so yeah yes. like the feelings haven't changed but the circumstances drove us apart so you can see lord coke he he sort of looks away from you and you can tell that it's in all likelihood his this as much as you've got some uh, impressive psychic protections uh something you learned in the order he, like yourself he is a, a gifted empath and I think there's there's a wave of love and loss that that he hits that hits him as well, and he nods and says, "I thought." Uh, and he steps close to the um, uh, the map, and he touches something on it, 
and then it it was replaced with some pictures and the pictures are of a a region i can actually show you what one or two of them might look like uh for one there is a picture of uh alicia or alicia i suppose is the proper one she has dark hair dark eyes uh she definitely would um have more of a um uh like a south american ancestry or uh, uh, perhaps a uh like a latinx uh ancestry uh she's short uh but she certainly makes up for it in drive but what you see is like this Many pictures set in woods very much like these. You can see her and a small team that includes uh, at least one dwarven uh, techno wizard uh, and um, support staff, some uh, soldiers to accompany her. And Lord Coke uh, says, Alicia was... she was allowed to bring an expedition down to the dark woods. She had found information that that suggested that allies may be found in there. What do you know of the dark woods, Lady Serena? Not much. There's not much that do. Even the Federation of Magic, they won't allow their people in there. It's a place of great magic. Ley lines and nexuses riddle the woods. And there is a strange group of DBs. We know them only as the foresters, but they protect the integrity of the woods as well, though it's also said to be full of many dark things. We had heard in the past that Lady Alicia, that um, those traveling the dark woods, so long as they are mindful and respectful of the woods themselves, they would not find enemies among the foresters, and they would let them go about their task. And she found evidence that something may have come through that would be of value for Castle Refuge and the Legion. And he gestures again and there's a picture that comes up now and what she's standing next to is kind of like imagine that in that same woods that you saw there was a half buried ruin that had a distinctly classical look to it. White marble columns and etchings all across the stone. They're all smiling. Uh, Alicia, and you know that smile well. That's when she is at her most um, curious. And When were these images captured, my lord? These were captured uh, one, one month ago. Over the mm -hmm. past month, we had this information come in. There were the communications, of course, from the Dark Woods has been spotty. And it's been two weeks since we've been able to get any contact with her expedition. We trust that they normally could account for themselves. She has a capable crew with her. But, and he touches the one of the, the uh, or gestures towards one of the images and it kind of zooms in. And you can see that there's writing at the base of one of the uh, temples, or one of the um, stone uh, things. She thought that this was of Atlantean origin, something dating back from the time before they fell, before those creatures seized Atlantis. In the world of, of rifts, in the Atlantic Ocean, there is an entire continent that has returned. 
However, scholars here, relying on the research of Aaron Tarn, and you wouldn't recognize that, Aaron Tarn is the most widely traveled person on the entire uh, Earth of Rifts. Nobody has traveled as far, nobody has written as widely on what they've seen. And what troubles us is we have seen these markings in Tarn's recollections. And they came from Mexico. At the time of rifts, it's not widely known. Only those who have traveled far or those who live far to the south. Mexico, and indeed most of South America, is controlled by empires of vampires. Humans are enslaved. And what Tarn's research suggests is that vampires are but an expression of powerful, uh, world-dominating creatures. They are the swarm to the queen of a vampiric co uh, colony. And a queen is... If you can think of any form of... any type of formless Lovecraftian nightmare, that is the source of a vampiric spread. Vampires come through, build up the necessary psychic link to drag their overlords through from the other world, and then entire continents can fall to them. We have not been able to tell Alicia that this is what we suspect. If this is some form of effort for those things to travel northward in the rich magics of the dark woods there would be nothing to prevent them from spreading and with both the federation and the coalition states abandoning most of the realm between that would give them fertile ground to grow their hordes we need you and your crew to get to her as fast as you can. That needs to be destroyed. We cannot allow something to come through and take root in the south. The Federation of Magic and the Coalition, those are living beings, those are men and women. This thing that might come through lives only to feed and to breed. We cannot allow that to occur. Of course not. I know that your time with Alicia that you have a connection with her. And my reason for selecting you for this, Lady Serena, is independent of that relationship, but I hope that it will lend you urgency, but not cause you to proceed without caution. Of course. Then, we have secured a hover vehicle for you, armored and armed. We would prefer you leave at your earliest opportunity. I'm ready now. Then, we have secured you with extra provisions, what we could. The vehicle is fueled. It has been maintained as best we can. We sadly cannot spare a pilot or technician but we trust that you and yours will be able to get there we will make do he hits the thing again and it once again returns to the display of the entire map in shimmering she, wait blue. before she before he does that 
she stops him and she says, "May I?" And she, he, I don't know. He, I'm assuming he nods his head. Yep. She grabs some sort of from the side table or a drawer or something that it looks almost like a normal piece of paper, but she sort of whiffs it through the hologram of the the image of uh, Alicia by the monument smiling, and it sort of transfers it onto the piece of paper. And I'll she bet. folds it and puts it in her uh, pocket. Yep. And, and it's and then lets them close Because it it's down. magical too. It's almost it, like a draw. Do you want it to be a drawn illustration or like a perfect uh, replica? It's almost like, yeah, I, I imagine it almost like a hologram. Like when you look into it, you can see deep into the image. Like yep. it's Absolutely. really there. Yep. <sighs> okay. So you have that with her. Awesome. Then uh, he says, I wish you luck. And as always, and maybe we have some greeting that we do, yeah. and uh, I yeah. bow and. Well, I, I was trying to. I, I haven't given any thought to it, but like every sort of like hand salute and whatnot has its like fascistic connotation, so it's tough to pick. Yeah. But you know, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I think he clasped sure. hands. You know, yeah. and again, like you are both psychic, uh, so I think that there is a, a little. You can't help it. There's a little bit of bleed over where you. Can, he is genuinely worried about her as well. Maybe we sort of clasp hands with our, you know, our psychic sword hand, and it's it's almost like you, you don't draw your weapon, but you you show it to your ally, kind yeah. of psychically, oh, yeah. you know, it's like a sword shake. Love it. Okay, so then, guys, um, Lady Serena, you finish your meeting with Lord Coke. Uh, the door <laughs> opens almost as if someone was waiting, and he said, uh, "You walk mm -hmm. out without a further word with Lord Coke." Um, the rest of you guys, uh, we find you guys waiting just outside of Castle Refuge. And as we, uh, uh, Lady Serena in, in the interim seems to have grabbed her materials. And the things that you, that uh, Brandon and Longwalker, guys, why don't you tell us what to, uh, uh, let me show you first the, the vehicle. So this is hovering here. And it may look like a machine gun, but that's actually a um, anti-personnel laser uh, that is mounted to the top of this vehicle. And nice. you can see that there is someone has uh, painted a picture of like a, a wild boar on the side of it, uh, and this thing is named the Hog. <laughs> so, what do we see? What is uh, we see as Lady Serena with her, you know, the sort of like regular. Northern gun, you you know, uh, outfit, um, survival pack. As uh, she is walking down, what do we see with you guys? Uh, well, I think Brandon um, is sort of like uh, in his own world, which is kind of typical for him, and he's uh, you know working with some like ley line magic in his hand, trying to do something really intricate. Um, and and like it's not working right, and he doesn't get angry or pissed off. He's just like starts starts over again. Uh, and when he sees um, uh, lady, would he call her lady, or is he uh, lady? I think he, I think he I think he might because he's yep. he's uh, he's kind of a mild mannered uh, person, uh, and in some ways kind of an innocent. Yep. Um, he's being disabused of that instance as time goes by, but he's still kind of at that level. Um, so I think he just see, he, you know, she's a cyber knight and he really respects that. So um, not only because of her, but because of her, her, you know, status in the, in the organization, like he, he does call her Lady Serena. Okay. Um, he sees her come and he, he's, he, he says Lady Serena, but when he says it, He's got this, uh, like in the illustration, like this face mask on, and it's there because, like, when he first, you know, connected with a ley line, it like blew out his like insides, uh, and so it's it's not you know cybernetic or anything. It just helps him breathe. Yep. Um, and so he talks like he's from a, he's in a Christopher Nolan movie. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, with that so. completely bizarre accent. <laughs> well, hello, lady. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> and, like, where is this guy from? Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> is he drunk? So, <laughs> exactly. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna actually do that because it will get annoying. Um, but uh, he does <laughs> George, have this a little honest. bit. When has that ever stopped me? <laughs> or me? <laughs> um, so. 
but I will I will spare everybody this time. But I, he does have that kind of filtered, like you know, Lady Serena, you look <laughs> troubled. And that was the last time I did it that way. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What do you know of our mission? I I know nothing. I was waiting to hear what you discovered. Well, trouble in the what were they called? The wild woods? Uh, the dark woods. Oh, Our the woods. dark woods. Some ancient trouble has been unearthed, and an old friend of mine is there investigating it. And Lord Coke fears that an ancient evil may be coming through, and we need to make haste and attempt to stop it, or at the very least rescue the people out of there and prepare for something greater. Very well. Let us go hope, as quickly as possible. I hope uh, you're... So Brent, we see... Lay lines are ready. Long Walker maybe walks around uh, to the front. Uh, he's been helping secure supplies or making sure the correct supplies were uh, placed in the back of the hog. Uh, what do we see with uh, Long Walker? Well, Long Walker... He helps with the supplies, and you know if they're done before uh, before we're ready to go, he was kind of probably just sitting in the grass and in, in the sun, just in, enjoying life and uh, taking in the little things. Um, yeah. And so as he sees Serena walking around, he'd probably stand up, stretch a little bit, and smile at her. And, so one of the cool things about the uh, juicers that they really do play up in the Savage Worlds version is that, um, like the the incredible uh, nanotech and um, drugs that are coursing through their system is not jacked all the time. To manage this stuff, they've got an apparatus of drugs that basically dope them. So they're like super chill, you know, stoners most of the time. But when they get into combat, there are these frighteningly violent and lethal things which awesome. I, I think yeah. is terrific like what a, what a great way of yeah presenting. i love it yeah it makes so, it a little so, yeah. easier knowing that your heart's going to explode at some point thanks to <laughs> the forgotten technology you've jammed into your body you just gotta enjoy the little things in life <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i think one of the things you guys can tell is that uh, anyway. long walkers markings uh, on him too, like he's got tr probably ritual scar scarification and whatnot that doesn't appear to be um, uh, caused by violence. Um, some of the, uh, you know, some of the communities around Rift North America have uh, basically they fell to uh, like um, Iron Age uh, or slightly further level of technology and never advanced beyond that. Uh, and Long Walker actually comes from one of those communities, so he probably has. Um, strange phrasings because they would have their own pigeon English that they would have grown up in. That was before he became a juicer. So, um, guys, one of the things, let's let's talk um, mechanics-wise. So one of the things we're going to be using is out of the uh, Forever, or sorry, the Tomorrow Legion field manual, oh. some great rules for survival. Mm. Uh, and there's oh, cool. also great was... rules for um, open land travel. And one of the ways that they travel... Oh, you hate that, though. I know, it's terrible. <laughs> terrible. Even in a one-shot, I'm like, you know, this is really all I want to do is have you guys... This is... <laughs> Honestly, if you're thinking of post-apocalyptic stuff, like, what better idea is there than doing a road trip in a post-apocalyptic setting, right? I love it, yeah. <laughs> it's you the road. What? It's Mad Max. It's... Mad Max, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, you know what? On the plus side, a hovercraft, it's fully armored with you know mega damage armor is way better to wait out a hurricane in than a boat most <laughs> assuredly and you guys all you know you guys were very very smart to pick uh the characters that have great repair skills and great piloting wait a minute uh -oh. the nice thing is we get to we'll likely get to see the critical breakdown of vehicles as well <laughs> So here's yeah. what we start with, guys, is um, they have, rather than having um, you track like um, your specific uh, how much repair parts and how much food and how much ammo and whatnot, what we do is we abstract everything. 
So um, whenever there's an opportunity for things that things might be depleted, we make a roll. You roll the dice. If it comes up a one, then the dice goes down by one. Um, you will have opportunities as well over the course of your journey to pick up other supplies. Uh, you may lose other supplies as a result of certain circumstances, but right now you have a D6 in each of the five supplies. Those five are ammo, food, fuel, spare parts, and water. Now, thanks to the generous donors to the Heroes Save Villages campaign, you guys also have three dice. You can bump up those dice uh, three times. So of those four, I can put it in uh, chat maybe. Okay, so you yeah. guys know which ones we're dealing so, with here. And obviously, sorry, these, t these stats work exactly the same way as our normal stats do. You're trying to get a four on that die. No, you just don't want to roll a one. Oh. Just don't want to roll. Yeah, you don't it. need to roll a success for it. It's just, it's to, Got it. like, every day, uh, your food and your water will make a roll for each of those. Okay. Um, and uh, the fuel, every day you travel, will make a roll for that as well. Um, the ammo really only comes up if you guys get in a fight. If you get in a firefight, we'll make a roll for ammo. Uh, if you guys, uh, your vehicle breaks down and you have to repair it, we'll make a roll for spare parts. Um, but otherwise, you guys are good. So, if you can bump three times. Each of them is at a D6 right now. You can Each step is one step up in the dice. So, a D8, D10, D12. What are you guys thinking? Um, does anyone have uh, any the repair skill? I do not. No. I, don't, I don't think any of you do. No. So then probably taking extra spare parts <laughs> help too much. Okay. So that means one. Yeah. You bump that yeah. to a D8, Brent? No, I was going to say spare parts aren't going to be helpful because none of us know what to do with them. Uh, <laughs> well, here's one of the nice things with, um, uh, with Savage Worlds is you're always rolling a wild die. So you've always right. got at least slightly better than a 50% chance because you're always rolling 1d4 plus whatever. And also, this is why you have bennies as well, too. Um, right. The re uh, green bar is your bennies, guys. Uh, Brandon starts with four. But everyone else has three. Uh, there's a wide variety of things you can spend those on, but we'll talk about that when uh, they come up. The blue bars is your things like uh, your burn for Long Walker. It's the PPE for Brandon that you use to fuel your magic, and it's the uh, ISP, the inner strength points for Lady Serena for your psychic powers. One of the ways that it is uh, imp that Savage Worlds um, allows you to duplicate a, or replicate a bunch of different things using the same core set of rules is by leaning into something called trappings. So the trappings is how your power manifests and it's very important that we sort of lean into what those are to avoid everything feeling kind of samey and uh, mm -hmm. the difference between PPE and ISP are one of the ways they do that. So, um, what are you guys thinking here? We, uh, ammo, food, fuel, spare parts, or water? We don't need to spend a huge amount of time. Just pick some and I we'll go I say we just it. go few, food, fuel, and water. Okay. That's okay. What kind of... Uh, does it have, like... Are the guns on this thing, like, ammo-driven or, like, tied to the power source, like, uh, energy-driven? Uh, driven by uh, a power source, but if uh, they are also subject to breaking down. Okay. Everything yeah, I mean, is I, cobbled together and poorly maintained and whatnot. So, I I, I will second Jeff's uh, three items. Okay. Food, food, water, and fuel. Yeah, fuel sure. I'm, 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 that, that's where we're um, I'm semi decent at survival, which I think covers gathering food. So, in a pinch, uh, Long Walker can take some time to can, get his more. But that would also mean you're spending. Out. Uh, so, your travel increments are broken down into six-hour periods. Yes, you absolutely can do that, but you can't travel and hunt at the same time. Right. The food and water, I imagine, is because we're trying to get to this as quickly as we can. And yeah. the fuel is we don't want to be stranded. Like, if we're right. out of fuel, then... Yeah, no, that makes yeah. sense. There will be yeah. communities and whatnot that you'll pass along the way, but yeah, it's going to be kind of wild open territory. And you're also going to be passing very very close uh in your trip it's about a 340 mile trip that you're going to need to make to the dark woods and then into the place where alicia was last seen and what uh i'm very thankful to have a means of transportation other than doing this on foot so thank you to those people who 
<laughs> yes. Yeah. Allowed us to have that. Taken a while. Yeah. So when, and in these rules, what that means is that as opposed to traveling at uh, a rate of 12 uh, miles every six hours on foot, you guys will be able to cruise along at 21 miles for every six hours. Awesome. So the way that it works is you cannot travel more than 12 hours in a day. You can push yourself to travel 12 hours in a day, but you need to. There's a number of rules that we're going to be making throughout it. Um, at the encounters, I draw. I've already done this beforehand to save us time. I drew a bunch of cards from my awesome action deck from the Savage mm -hmm. Worlds uh, Adventure Edition box set um, to set up what's happening on each day, but. It may take you seven days to get there. It may take you 14 days to get there. It depends on how fast you go along and what complications come up in the interim. Um, okay. What you um, uh, will be doing as well each day, uh, you guys will be picking. There are four different tasks that need to be done. Well, there's three that need to be done, and there's one that does not need to be done, and it's an optional one. It's fortunate. Unfortunately, Hobbs wasn't able to make it today. Uh, but the three tasks that need to be done, one is a navigator, and survival is the key skill for the uh, navigator. There's a lookout. Uh, the key skill for the lookout is notice, and there is the pilot. The key skill for the pilot is, of course, piloting. <laughs> Shocking, right? That, yeah. <laughs> How did they come up with that name? I don't know. All right, so the... Um, the pilot uh, will, I'm looking at, if you guys have a copy of uh, the Tomorrow Legion Field Manual, I'm looking at page 17 and 18 of that. Uh, the navigator will, uh, can give bonuses to the lookout, pilot, and scout if they get a raise. Uh, it, mean, it ensures that they're traveling in the right direction. Um, it might waste time on a failure, and a critical failure is, is even worse. Um, lookouts, it gives you an opportunity to respond to encounters before they happen. So you can choose whether whatever comes up. One of the things I really like about Savage Worlds is that combat encounters are one quarter of the types of encounters you can get. The encounters are broadly broken down into obstacles, treasure, um, or was it obstacles, treasure, uh, strangers, and uh, hostile. So me, cool. Which I think is, is a, a, that's a much better way of replicating what Overland gives you a, a more textured feeling than just, oh my god, everything wants to kill me. Totally, that's great. Yeah, and then uh, pilots, the pilots are crucial because uh, they have to make a roll every time, and if they push the vehicle to travel for an extra six hours, they take a minus one to the piloting check. If you fail that, the vehicle gets fatigued, which means starts taking penalties to future rolls. You can take time to repair that using spare parts, but that will take time away from travel, and it also will expose you to another day. So, and the final one, the one that's optional, is Scout, um, which allows you to scout ahead, which I allows you to see what encounters that I've drawn and then decide whether or not you want to encounter them or not. But uh, we're not going to worry about that one. So, guys, who is going to be a pilot? Who's going to be a lookout? Who is going to be a navigator? I'm not too bad at navigating. I've got a D6, but I've got an edge that gives me plus two to the roll. And I uh, don't and think any of us have piloting. Nope. So it's an unskilled role. One of the upside, um, because of the kind of computer-assisted uh, uh, piloting on this, it does have a handling of plus one, which means you get a plus one to your role. So my D4 uh, minus two becomes D4 minus one. Uh, D4 minus, but you also get your wild dice plus one. Remember, you're always rolling okay. your wild dice of 1D6. And you get to add the plus one to what whichever dice is the highest. Okay, I see. Yeah. So my uh, my unskilled dice can never make it to four, but my wild dice might. Oh well, well your unskilled dice. Yeah, your unskilled dice can still explode. Oh, even if it's a four. Okay, I see. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And I have a no a good notice. Um, but on top of that, uh, I also have the ability to, s I have expanded awareness, in fact, as an edge. Um, so that kind of gives me some uh, extra ability to notice things uh, of a magical nature as well. Yeah, and I think that um, since none of us can pilot the hog, I think that uh, Lady Serena would just do it then. Okay. 
<laughs> nice. Now, nice. since you guys did such a great job of everyone introducing their characters as well, I am going to give you each one point of conviction as well. Conviction is something you can roll 1d6 and uh, spend it to add 1d6 to any result. And can we decide after we have rolled or do we have to decide beforehand? Yep. After your roll. Oh, awesome. Oh, great. Yep. Cool. Okay. Is that unique to Rifts, Kev, or is that part of Savage Worlds in general? No, so it used to be unique to different settings for it, and then in Adventure Edition, they just made it something called Conviction. It's great. It's it's a great extra narrative meta currency in addition to Benny's. Yeah. It's, it's a cool. carryover of the strange way that you did XP in original Deadlands. You would add like you would be adding a specific type of poker chip to the pool as the campaign progressed. So characters could draw a black poker chip or whatever the fuck color it was, and it was even better than their usual, you know, uh, poker chip things. So, right, right, yeah, cool. Okay, that's great. Okay, so then we got our supplies set out. We've got our positions, uh, guys. Why don't you list down what your position is in the chat so I don't forget, and so we're all clear. Um, now, the one other thing that the generous donors gave you guys is you each have a communicator. So you each have a, a comm unit to be able to speak to each other. Um, you also have one translator, something a, a, a mechanical device that is uh, set up to translate whatever common languages you should come across between here and the dark woods. Who's carrying the translator? I don't really like technology, so... Yeah, I think that that's something that uh, I would hold on to. Okay. You're uh, the most uh, charming and whatnot as well, too, so... Yeah, I'm... Oh, by the way, I'm not good with people. I have a thing on my face that makes me talk <laughs> like this, so yeah. it's not... I literally have a negative one. Yeah. First way with well, people. And Leyline Walkers are just really kind of off-putting in general. They're yeah. very strange. Okay, now one other thing I've given you guys is um, the generous donors also kicked in 500,000 credits for you guys uh, to, to buy extra uh, weaponry. What I've done is I've spent some of that on your anti-personnel uh, anti laser. Um, it's actually linked, so it's plus one to hit, plus two to damage. Uh, so that sucker is on top. That still leaves you 250,000. I don't want to spend too much time on this because it just like sh that's not what we're here to do is go on a shopping spree. But what I'm thinking is uh, outfitting you guys with a missile launcher and some uh, anti-vehicle uh, weaponry with that. Does that awesome. sound good? Yeah. Sure. I was going to suggest that um, Bolt is kind of inefficient for PPE expenditure in this. Like a pistol that's a technology weapon for George would be awesome. Um, let's see. I have a laser pistol actually already. You um, could have one that's powered by magic, and then you could turn it into MD magic if you need hmm. to. And then you didn't have to worry about ammo. You could just charge it with your own. He's also weapon. got. You know what? Uh, this is one of those rabbit holes we can go down with this world. Oh, okay. Yeah, just because like that's why the uh, I really didn't. Uh, I said not to bother with the expending. Rifts very much like Shadowrun, very much like any other thing, that, any other game that's very gear driven. It's very easy to go down a rabbit hole and just spend a whole lot of time getting gear. It's part of the fun of it too, but for for a one shot, I don't really want to spend too too much uh, time just tweaking and whatnot. So we will give you the missile yeah. launcher uh, with some other stuff. Um, you know what? It's actually going to be relatively easy to because you've got the thing too. Why don't you take a look at the um, Techno Wizardry or the Adventure Tomorrow Legion Players Guide there, George? Yeah, page 104 has all um, the like uh, the telekinetic revolver and some other stuff. Why don't you pick one item out of there? Um, and Brent, I saw on did, on your wish list, did you have a gun that was worth up to seventy five thousand? I just might. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't you add that? Um, just you don't need to put it in the wait, you know put it in the in your character when you have a moment. Uh, we'll focus on the actual game for now. And then Jeffrey, um, what if we gave you a a light blade? So this would be uh, look like a sword hilt with a uh, crystal in it. When you activate it, it comes out. It does strength plus D eight plus 
two damage, but it has an armor piercing of ten. And we'll talk about what that means afterwards. It's, it'll be more armor piercing than what your gun is or your other weapon is. Um, the way that t dual wielding basically works is you can you, you can take multiple actions in this game by taking minus two uh, to your to the uh, to every action you take for each extra action you take. So if you want to attack with one weapon in each hand, um, there you go. I think there is an ambidextrous uh, quality as well too, but we're going to ignore that for today. So, so I'm thinking about the fire fireball launcher. Yep, works for me. The bottom one of five. Yeah, it's it's two fifty. Yep, works for me. So, Kevin, what I'll do is I'll grab the uh, J12. It's basically the same as I've got, but you lose the variable uh, laser resistant part and uh, you replace it with a grenade launcher. Uh, uh, and then I put some, I'll, it's not quite 75, so I'll take some armor piercing grenades and stun grenades would be fun to try out. Yep, done. <clears throat> Those Did are you all. See? Stun grenades are in the base Savage World book. Um, but. Uh, did you um, say two D six or two? They, I don't think on the first page of the equipment it said to you can you could just take regular. Yeah, Brent, no. I'm going to say no to the stun grenades because that's it's okay. very unlikely that people would bother making them in this world. Okay. All right, I'll take an assortment. Of yeah, the, it's right? on page ninety nine of the of the um, adventure edition Tomorrow Legionnaires guide there. Okay. Got it. So. Can, right. Did you say 2d6 or 2d8? Uh, it does, so it'll be strength plus 1d8 plus 2. Oh, 1d8 plus 2. Yep, and the AP is 10. So, guys, with all of your supplies loaded into the hog, do you guys have any last things you want to deal with before we set out? Um, no. No. Okay. Uh, make sure I pack my coffee. Let <laughs> me pack your coffee? He likes to enjoy coffee. Oh, nice. <laughs> right. I love the idea of this giant muscle bound guy making. Honestly, you know what? If you've seen Generation Kill, uh, there's a character named Rudy in it who's an actual. Um, I don't I think he's a Marine? Uh, who. He was actually in. Um, the Iraq conflict, the, the most recent one, and then played himself in the show. But he oh, wow. <laughs> is like just giant jacked guy who makes very careful, you know, a French press every day. <laughs> that's yeah, that's what I would have. Like, it's a travel thing, so you'd have to have like a, you know, French press type yeah, thing. Yeah, absolutely. I'll make, you, I'll make coffee for all three of us. Love it. Okay. So then, guys, so with that, the, boom, the hog, uh, you know, roars to life. Uh, do any of you guys sit on the uh, on the gun, or do you just wait until it's needed? You know what? I can sit on the gun. You get a good view to check things out. And... Okay. Um, yeah. Alrighty. So then it uh, flares up and raises from the ground, and the vehicle takes off and begins its trip towards the dark woods. So, guys... I was trying to find some really good atmospheric pictures to, to really capture what you guys are traveling in. Because so much of the space between communities in Savage Rifts has completely gone back to nature. Um, but it's also had unusual side effects, too. And we'll find what those are over the course of your trip. So, the first day, guys, uh, you guys head out... What we need to do is make some rolls here. So first off, Long Walker, why don't you give us... I have a technical question for you very quickly. Yep. When I'm entering the uh, new gun. Yep. Uh, and it is fine, but when I click on damage, it doesn't click. It's stuck on strength plus D4. Uh, it's a drop. Those to... are all drop-down menus. If you click yeah, so on if you it, look, and look underneath Kev, I mean, uh, Brent when you've got it. It's I just like a yellow thing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh, okay, I see. Yep. So, uh, okay. All right, sorry. Mom. No, no, it's a... These, uh, every uh, Roll20 sheet is a new adventure, right? So... <laughs> yep. Okay, so here we go. A Serena Longwalker. And... This is the kind of wild terrain that you guys are traveling through. 
Uh, you will be ho- heading through largely what was once Alabama. And for those uh, who may be listening at home from Alabama, I'm going to apologize in advance for butchering uh, the geography of uh, <laughs> Alabama. But I'll remind you, too, that uh, the rift did f- affect massive geographic changes, and I blame those for any inaccuracies you may find in my depiction of your fine state. So, the hog uh, is going to be traveling on the first day. Let's see. First, let's make some rolls, and then we'll figure out what the narrative is. So, um, I need... Uh, Brent, you're the navigator. You're up first. Why don't you give us a... How this works. Let's see. Give us can a... You say, can you say something about the navigator could help the pilot? Well, yeah, I here's the I thing. So... Because of the rays he rolled, now the lookout and the pilot will each get plus one to their rolls. So this is, I think, Brent, am I correct in thinking that this is, like, you are completely familiar with the area around here? Yeah, and I spent a lot of my, my tribe was very rustic and rural, so we spent a lot of time in the woods. And I'm just familiar with this, especially where, uh, you know, I'm close to my sort of newfound home. So I, I know everything really well and where to go. Nice. So yeah, you guys uh, have got some great direction. Um, let's next make a roll for the lookout. So I think Brandon. That's me, actually. I'm the lookout. Yep, yep. Brandon, go ahead. So sorry, yes, Brandon. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I do I. I know I'm hardy. <laughs> I was too busy putting my fireball launcher stats. In. It's okay. <laughs> Priorities. <laughs> Rift is all about the boom. So it's it's yeah. it's. It's yeah, they're, it's not. It's true. Um, so uh, just to understand, can I be like, there's that like little uh, circle in the top. Can I have my head part way out as I'm like physically looking around and sensing magic, you or could, am I in? You could sit up. You could sit on top. If you're not going to be on the gun, um, you know, then yeah. I mean, you could easily sit on top of there. I'd like to sit on top of there because I'm also. I don't want. Metal between me and the world is going to be a problem. So I would like to like yep. have the connection, closest connection I can have to ley lines. Yeah, yeah. No matter how they are. So, one so that's things, where I am. Well, that is, I think, clever that they pointed out in the uh, the field manual is that the progression of of uh, tr- of characters and and parties in rifts is going to be much closer to how fast a like a military group would would move through a modern, you know, um, mechanized military would move through. Um, uh, terrain like this, which is to say quite slowly and quite carefully. So you're not flying mm-hmm. along, you're not going to be flying off the back of this thing. You could easily sit on top and keep yourself up. Looking awesome. That, that's exactly what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah, so here we go. And then a plus one to that, so a seven. Seven, okay. Um, so then, that is a success. Keep a good watch. Draw encounters as normal. Done and done. Then, finally, Serena. You get a plus two to this result, partly because of the handling, partly because of your vehicle. Go ahead and give us a piloting check. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. So fantastic. So here's the thing. A critical failure. Uh, You (laughs) cannot spend bennies to re-roll. Critical failures you are absolutely yeah. stuck with. So, critical failure means... Oh, my goodness. We didn't That's get two ones. Both ones. Two ones. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, hold on. It's in the uh, vehicle fatigue. I think, I think you actually... guys, as slow as we're going, you guys still feel, like, motion sick. And, like, <laughs> as it's just the most herky-jerky, <laughs> horrible ride you've ever been on. I I'm afraid. almost falling off. Uh, I had a friend who used to, like, the way that he would piss off his significant other is by slowly, when they were on long car trips, moving back and forth across the lane to give it that swaying motion. That would work on me. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> if you're the passenger, oh, God. Unsurprisingly, they're not married any longer. Right. Okay. Let's see here. Um, under the rules here. So for those listening at home, I, I've not run Savage Worlds uh, in uh, quite a while, and I've never run Savage Rifts in a long-term campaign. So there's a lot of rules to keep track of, and so forgive me for having to look stuff up. But I do want to thank Jeff for starting out, out having... You know, <laughs> oh, it's just... 
it's one of those uh, things. Adventure. You know, it's one of those things that I absolutely love about Savage Worlds is that it, for one, you know, the encouragement to take hindrances. So you're playing flawed characters. I absolutely love that, and yep. I I love that you can't get away from a, a critical failure. It's yep. great fun stuff. Yep. It's in the same way that like a, cri a critical success is such fun. Same thing here. All right, so yeah. what we need to roll, actually, is... Jeff, would you give me a d20 roll, please? Okay. Oh, d6, d6. Forgive me, d6. And it's actually on the DM screen as well, too, or Game Master screen. Ooh. Looks either good or bad. Oh, shit. No, that's severe failure. So... <laughs> <laughs> you're driving along, and I think what happens is that, you know, there is... Um, you're going along, and, and uh, what you guys can see, you're passing through uh, woods very much like this, and what you can see kind of flap above uh, overhead. Imagine a swan, but made up of the materials that make up a dragonfly. It's got long segmented wings that are kind of flapping along. It's long, you know, a neck going up, but it's all segmented and chitinous. And then there's the, the beautiful eyes. And in spite of this unusual look, like they're just gorgeous. They ca their wings catch the light and you're all kind of looking off and, and Lady Serena, you just, I guess maybe your mind's on, you know, with you stuck inside this thing rumbling along um, and cursing what? that, God, like the previous driver was a heavy, heavy smoker of dwarven cigars. Uh, so it just, it stinks in here as well. One of these things drifts ahead, light catches your eyes and unfortunately you cleave up against a, um, a stump and it catches one of the hover kind of struts. I need uh, Brandon and Longwalker. Why don't you give us agility checks, please? Actually, no, Longwalker, gonna... you're fine. You're you're in the in the the place there. No, I actually, no, 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 no. Both of you guys do it. There's something actually fun I can use from Savage Rolls. What's that, uh, yeah. Jeff? Oh, I was gonna add. I, I think that it's also like this thing is um, maddeningly slow. Is, is sort of the way I would put this. I think that part of the problem is Lady Serena is like trying to push this thing to its maximum speed, just yep. constantly. Just like, you know, she's she's playing with switches, trying to change settings. Like maybe if I give it a little more of this, this thing will mm -hmm. go faster. Like just, so she's, she's like ignorantly trying to sort of speed yep. it up. <sighs> All right. So fortunately it has not been rendered immobile. <laughs> that's good <laughs> yep. so there's a plus We're side there the downside I... is is this is some pretty severe damage uh, and what it means is that you will need uh, to repair this thing take uh, time to repair this thing or uh, you're going to suffer minus four to all future piloting checks is the castle out of sight yet? Before <laughs> so you guys, this is six hours out of Castle Refuge. Yeah, <laughs> there's a castle back there. There is still... Uh, so basically, guys, you can think of it as there's 14 uh, six-hour segments before you get to uh, the Dark Woods. So, <laughs> so far, so good. Ron Walker did not spill his coffee. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> what you guys... So, Brandon, so you guys know mechanically what I'm doing. Uh, there's a, a cool, uh, there's a bunch of great little rules in, in Adventure Edition, but one of the ones I like is for um, if you want to just do a, like a narrative uh, sequence in the, in the game, but have it have mechanical consequences, you can have characters make rolls to avoid bumps and bruises or just things from mm. the road. Both of you guys got critical successes on that because uh, you both got raises. Uh, so I think that, yeah, Brent, like maybe you're, it hits and then you, you're, you know, your reflexes snap in you. Pfft, grab your mug and are able to sip it without it going anywhere. And Brandon, likewise, what do you think? Did you see this coming or what? Um, I felt a disturbance <laughs> in the ley lines. <laughs> uh, and I knew something was very off. And I started, like, I didn't know it was inside the actual <laughs> vehicle that I'm sitting on top of. I just knew something was coming, so I was bracing myself, expecting something from far afield to come my way, and yet no, it was right beneath my butt. Okay. And I think Long Walker would have noticed too. And I think I pointed out something to Serena, but it was very calm and his voice wasn't raised or panicked. It was just very like he was making a side comment or, you know, sort of, you know, there's a uh, 
stump coming up you might want to avoid and it might just not have like <laughs> 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 all right then like, bam, like... so then guys <laughs> what do you wish to do now uh, six we... hours travel you could still get six hours more of travel but uh by pushing the vehicle for another six hours and the driver for another six hours, there's another minus one. Uh, no, no, we have to attempt to repair. We can't yeah. drive with minus four. Okay. <laughs> you can't we just drive with, half a minus with minus two. You yeah. make it minus six, we might as well. Minus one, I give you a plus one. Here, Will. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think I agree. We should uh, repair this, this vehicle <laughs> if we can. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. God, I love this game. <laughs> yeah, it's, okay. it's fun. Okay. I love that we're probably going to end up walking, and it's going to be <laughs> like... Oh, and by the way, Lord Coke, your hovercraft is like four miles from the base. We, we parked it at the corner of... Uh... Yeah. Let's <laughs> come back. <laughs> All right. So then, guys, uh, what... Um, who is going to... Now, here's something you can do, too. Um, now... Normally, to uh, there is an, an action to like to aid another. Uh, it is called. Mm, 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 mm. What is it called? Breaking things. No, it's called. <laughs> where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Support. Um, you make a skill check, and if you succeed, you get plus one to someone else's uh, roll. Okay. So, who um, who wants to try and repair this thing? And just to be clear, the role that you're making is the same skill that the person is going to then use to yeah. accomplish the activity. Yeah. And to let you know, each six-hour period, so each success will re will improve this technical difficulty by one. Minus four will become minus two, minus two will then become minus one, and then one more will be zero. It'll just take a six-hour period each time, and who knows how long that she has. Oh my okay. goodness. We have to repair it four times? Well, you repair it once and then take a minus two to your roll. But if you get a critical success, though, if you if you get a raise on your roll, then you get to roll a second time. Remember, you have that conviction as well. Yeah, totally. So, who is taking? Uh, who? Uh, what are we guys doing here? Are, are you working together? Is someone keeping an eye out in case that uh, whatever encounter that may have happened? Yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll stay on the guns just in case. Okay. Um, so, Brendan. Since you're the one that sounds like you're on the guns, if you want to add the stats, the guns do 46 damage. Uh, they have AP four, and they have the um, uh, they do mega damage, and they have no, they don't do mega damage, but they ignore size modifiers. Okay. So whatever is big or small or whatever else, uh, you you ignore those completely, uh, and it's it can be it has a special quality in uh, chases. Okay. Okay. Um. So what? Uh, who wants to? So I, I, I think I should. Well, I don't know what, it, Lady Serena. And now I do. <laughs> now I want to do the thing, Lady Serena. <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to look at this device, or would you like some help? Me and this machine are not getting along. Why don't you take a look, Brandon? I could use some help if you can give me some. I'll do my best. Okay. So then, uh, Lady Serena, why don't you give us a repair check, please? So that's just another untrained. Yep. Yeah. Skilled. Now, and you can, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Amazing. So you're giving, yeah. actually, I think with a, a crit success, you're actually giving a plus four. Let me double check that. Um, support, support. Uh no, plus one on a success, plus two. So you now have plus hmm. two to your repair check there, Brandon. Okay, so uh, I'm going to uh, really take my time and kind of, because I, you know, all 
all this kind of technological stuff is a mystery to me in certain ways. So I'm using yep. my basic knowledge, and uh, so we'll add the plus two wow. after. Okay, I'm using a Benny. Yep. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, because that was not two ones. That was actually from the negatives, so I can actually do it. So I'm spending yes. a Benny. And if you roll one one, you're still able to, to re-roll. Why does your wild right, up as a zero? Um, oh, because of the minus two. I guess because it, yep, yep. yep. It's yeah, terrible. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> we, we needed. Well, I, I will point yeah. out, I, I did throw on there the extra thing that I was like, you know, if anyone else wants to put their donations towards uh, someone to help these guys, a technician or something, and everyone's like, no more guns. <laughs> no, cool, yeah. cool, cool vehicle. All so, right, here we go. So, so oh, by, by my understanding, if we were walking, we'd be faster right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, because we're just standing here trying to work on this thing. I have, <laughs> I, I have no idea what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> There's sparks going. Um, now hold on. I mean, I did get a plus two, so I got a two technically, but still. Oosh. All right. Even if well, tell you what, tell you what, I'll roll my can. I'm gonna spend my conviction because oh. if I get a two, I will. Uh, that's enough. Yeah. So I'm going to. <coughs> So I kind of, I see that I'm messing this up. And I'm like, I realize I have to get out. I, my mind is all about magic now. Like I was a normal person. And then at some point when, it, when I realized I had this ability, like my brain was scrambled and my neurological connections like literally changed to accommodate like thinking in terms of interacting with the world through magic. But now in this moment, I'm like focusing on the physical world and technology and, you know, it's, it's some of those of those things I used to know about better are coming back to me. Yep. Hopefully. So here's a 1d6 for conviction. Come on. That's what I need. Just oh, enough. yes. All right. So in those six hours, you guys managed to get the vehicle um, repaired enough so it's not going to be throwing him off. Serena is now only taking a minus two to her piloting checks. So. Oh, oh, and I wanted to point out to the other guys too, um, as part of the juicer um, chemical thing, it, it really erodes my ability to concentrate on things. So I'm minus one at all smarts related stuff. <laughs> so for me, this would be like a minus three instead of a minus two. When he's not two. in combat. He's yeah. just, right. yeah. He's honestly the uh, what he's the stoner working at at uh, McDonald's <laughs> until he becomes like fucking Captain America assassin. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, it's a great character. Uh, okay, so then uh, with that done, um, you guys uh, have a chance to to bed down for the evening. Uh, not as much uh, travel as you were hoping, but you at least got some uh, distance between yourself and the dark woods. Uh, now at the end of day, what we need is, uh, let's see here, who, so the things we're most commonly going to roll are going to be food, fuel, spare part, well, it's food, fuel, and water. Why don't we do this? Uh, George, you're on food detail. Brent, you're okay. on fuel detail. And Jeff, you're on water detail. This is where your numbers are currently. Uh, so why don't you each give me the roll, uh, the D6, or give us a roll for your relevant thing. I think you're each rolling a D8 right now. Yeah. Just don't roll a one. Okay. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> and <clears throat> we don't roll our wild dice on this. Right? No, you don't. Just, right. just whatever the flat I, dice I is. We actually rolled a one on a D8. Oh, one my goodness. One. We almost lost all three. Okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so your fuel is down to a D6. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And we didn't even go anywhere. We must have busted a fuel line. Uh, no, I think it was just her trying to force this thing to go as fast as she could push it. Yeah. Uh, right, we also right. need, because you did uh, make use of some uh, some of your parts, uh, Brandon, you were the one who did the repair truck. Give us a D6 roll. Here we go. Nice. Okay. So that is where your supplies stand right now. Uh, you guys have your, your evening uh, at night. Uh, you can feel... Oh, uh, Brandon, give me a 2d6 roll, will you? I love how uh, we started out and we're like this badass heroes and it's going to be this awesome adventure. And immediately it's like a Three Stooges routine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, wait, we've all tr worked together in the past, right? Yeah, all of you guys have, yeah. yeah. Okay, so Brendan, you'd be aware that I'm I'm cool with you draining my my PPE as a source for your magic. 
and it's uh-huh. worth it okay. for five points. And he weirdly keeps asking you to do it too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind, man. You right can do now. whatever you want. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm like, okay. I just wanted to stop bothering him. Like, <laughs> and Long Walker always grabs your shoulder when he's telling you it too. Exactly. Like, just get, get off. <laughs> Just leave me alone, okay? Just leave me alone. <laughs> You're weirding me out, man. Okay. Um, what I was rolling for is whether you guys are close to a ley line or not. Uh, so there is one. Aha. Uh-huh. You are near a ley line, so um, okay. you, the only thing that what you uh, what you would trigger is your fast healing if you if you need it. Yeah. So right. that's awesome. All right. So then, guys, the evening uh, fortunately passes uneventfully. Next morning comes. So let's start off with first our navigator rolling. Hope you guys can get it. It's funny. I, th- I, I rolled, uh, or I, I did not roll, but like I, I laid out the uh, the encounters along the way, and I'm like, uh, should I do two weeks worth? Yeah, I should. I, why not? <laughs> All right. So long. Work, once again, you know, like uh, in spite of the shitty driving, you're, you've got a pretty good idea for where to go. So um, both of you guys will get a plus one uh, to your respective rolls, which means it's only a minus three net to yours, Serena. All right. So, sure. And then next up will be uh, Brandon. Right, you're giving us our notice roll for lookout. Oh, fucking awesome. Holy shit. Okay. So that means. Two raises there today. Uh, so the raise can I, so it's rare that there's things like multiple raises are helpful on soak rolls, and I think that's usually it. Uh, mm-hmm. Just because okay. it, it's it's uh, like I, I it means that you've wasted some raises and whatnot on it, but it also means it puts the game in a manageable range. You know, yeah. like exploding dice in other games are just I'm not sure if you've ever played first edition Legend of the Five Rings, but like a dice pool game where every ten can explode is just Oh wow, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. all no, over. That the makes place. Total- uh so what that but what that means though is that you cannot be ambushed in a random encounter. Oh awesome. You are okay. so per- yeah, so careful to be watching. So cool. now let's see about Lady Serena's travels so you are taking a another minus one on top of whatever's going on because whatever of, i roll yeah because it's just <laughs> rumbling along here we go <laughs> <laughs> so here's the upside is um you you succeed uh in not destroying the vehicle there's no damage to the vehicle this time uh however the vehicle is fatigued it's just you're you're running it hard over uneven terrain, and you know you're doing the things that people say not. To, you're, you're the like the uh, novice driver who's trying to get out of a snowdrift by hammering the accelerator. Yeah. I put my hand on. I come down from the gun turret. I put my arm on Serena's shoulder. Relax. It's okay. <laughs> I got some great incense. You should really try. <laughs> It'll help. Have you had any of the coffee yet? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, unless you want to spend Benny's to re-roll that, then your six hours pass. I mean, on. there's there's not much point. Okay. Uh, then it is uh, you can have a choice of whether you're going to push on. No one else has to roll anything further. Uh, you can choose to push on another six hours uh, to get a little closer. Uh, you would make another piloting check at minus one on top of whatever you rolled, uh, but otherwise there's no other consequences. What you know? if we stop and try and f- repair some more? What do you guys think? Uh, that's not a bad idea. I mean, you're already, at, you know, <laughs> such a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're also terrible at that, but... <laughs> All right. So then, uh, you guys uh, stop for the evening, trying to affect some further repairs. Um, who wants to roll for helping? Who wants to, or for supporting? Who wants to roll for the actual roll? And Long Walker, are you keeping an eye out? Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. Okay. And I, I'm happy to make the the actual roll again, Jeff. Okay, sure. I'll try to support you. Okay. Nice. nice. Success. Okay. So plus one to your roll. Okay. Here we go. Oh, 
So it's a three. Oh, so close. So close. You want to um, Benny that? Uh, let's see. What the hell? I mean, that's the thing about that about uh, Leyline Walker. I've got extra luck. Yep. So um, I, I will do so. Here we go. Ah oh, man. <sighs> so man, you don't make it any worse. You don't make it any better. Uh, you're still picking chunks of stump out of the uh, uh, some of the hover components. You know, he's Lady Serena really fucked this up. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> the uh, evening, however, is um, is uneventful. Uh, the the night, uh, you know, uh, the night sky once again is. is oh, give us a two d six roll there, Brandon. Let's see how close to a ley line uh, you're. And I, I'm using rules out of the um, hmm, Tomorrow Legion Player's Guide. Okay, six, nice. So yeah, you're actually close to a ley line again. Great. Um, and I just, I'm just kind of reaching out and sensing the magic in the area, um, the arcane energies. It, is there anything strange, like different, that I'm used to? Yeah, that I'm yeah. Used to Why don't you give us a out? notice check? All righty. There's something to be said for actually rolling encounters ahead of time, because I can make use of this. Mm -hmm, nice. Okay, cool. So I got a five. So once, once it's yeah. Says, so. Unless there's penalties. Up ahead, you can. One of the things that um, that uh, leyline walkers can do is they can actually transmit uh, and sense up and down the, uh, the the ley lines. So this this thing is probably about a, a hundred yards away from where you guys are camping. You have to go off yourself, and what you guys would see is like a long, translucent, shimmering blue wall. And you're able to walk up to this thing and place your hands on it. And what you sense is that there is, and this is to the south uh, east of where you guys are, in the direction you're, you're planning on going, there is a roiling disturbance that is coming. Now, one of the things that uh, was behind the devastation wrought on uh, Rift Service with the opening of the rifts uh, were ley line storms, magical tempests that can affect m incredible destruction uh, on regions. Uh, they like any kind of storm. They come in a wide variety. There's thunderstorms, and then there's thunderstorms, right? Um, but this feels like something is um, something is brewing up ahead in the direction you are traveling. Uh, what you can do is choose to, if you choose to try and push through uh, the um, the storm. Um, you may face the, uh, yeah, the the consequences of that. Uh, right. It, it also means that there are, is likely a phenomenal magical power on tap that you could draw on. Mm hmm But that can also be quite dangerous. Right. Um, what do you guys think? <clears throat> I, well, one thing just... It, uh, rules wise, I realize that it didn't matter actually, but we'll, I will remember going forward is I have Elan, which gives me plus two whenever I make a reroll with a Benny. Oh, right. oh. So it, it's not going to change anything, but, but previously, thankfully, but uh, going forward, I'll remember that. But would, Again, that, hold like, on. would that have given you a, a crit success on your last repair? Oh, earlier. Uh, What's your. Uh, that's notice. Where's my unskilled? Oh, here it is. So, uh,. Because you got a success on it, I know. Yeah, you got a six. Uh, oh, that's on notice. I got I no, so I got it was um my unskilled. I had a I used the conviction. I used the Benny, so my wild. But I got a, still got a zero. Then I used the conviction, but I was at a plus two, so that gave me the four. So I would have had a six. A six. So I wouldn't yeah. have actually done anything. Yeah. Um, but going forward, I I will remember that because that's one of the that's you know part of my being lucky is that yeah yeah at least so. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, I'm going to walk back to my uh, companion and say, "This is a storm ahead." I, I would have come with you because it's oh, blue okay, right. and blue, and I would say, "Make me tingle and quick." I know you okay. have that sort of spell that you sometimes use on me, so I'd be like, "Well," and I, basically, what happens is I'm like got my hand in the ley line and like absorbing, you know, this this information I'm picking up, and then I I know I've got to go talk to him, and I turn around, I'm like. Ah! <laughs> All Long Walker says is the right. Yeah. I know, it's so cool, and I just stick in my hand in the blue thing. I love these things, and yeah. I just want to make it clear that 
Long Walker wanted to be even more juiced up from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think you have a problem. You might need some help. Yeah, well, I totally know you can juice me up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you can hear the Long Walker and Brandon kind of talking off uh, away from you. Lady Serena, how are you? Uh, how are you feeling? I think she's kind of feeling stressed because um, she started out wanting to hurry to this <clears throat> scene uh, because of Alicia being there and her efforts to push the mission as fast as she can is like it, it's almost like you know moving through something with high viscosity like the faster you try to go the more it pushes back against you yeah and so she's frustrated but she's also you know, sort of meditating on that and thinking, you know, maybe I need to relax and more calmly move forward in this mission and not let my heart lead me and yeah. maybe we'll make better progress. So when, uh, that's great, that's awesome. I'll actually give, uh, you already you haven't spent any bennies. Not yet. I'll give you a point of conviction for that. That sounds good. It's a one shot. Nice. Um, so we'll take our mid-session break in a second here. I want to get just a little bit more um, legs under our uh, session here. So with Longwalker and Brandon coming back, um, what um, what does uh, Brandon tell uh, Lady Serena or uh, Longwalker about the the ley line storm? Yeah. So he's, he um, he basically he basically explains that you know it, it's ahead um, and that it can be dangerous, but he says. But there are advantages for me to be close to one of these storms. I can gain additional arcane strength. I do not know if you wish to take the risk, but it is in the direction we are going. Yep. Cool. It could also blow him up. <laughs> <laughs> a, there is a result. Oh, I can it out. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the uh, the the hog is um, is like it is a military grade vehicle. The 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 uh, armor and whatnot on this thing is designed to tr like to weather that kind of storm. It doesn't make it easier. It's going to be a nightmare trying to navigate that. But um, you could carry on. What it'll do is it's going to add basically a day's travel. It'll add another day's travel if you guys choose to move around, uh, or you guys can try and plow right through it. And does it affect us as individuals, or is it something that actually just affects like a vehicle or systems? If you guys are inside, then the, the results will likely only be at worst bumps and bruises. Okay. Uh, and if I want to tap into it, though, do I have to come out of the vehicle then? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. It's it's okay. if yeah, there, this does not have techno wizardry shielding on or anything like that. You'll still be right. Okay. Cool. 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 So, um, what do you guys think? I then? leave. Plow through, or um... <clears throat> absolutely. I think um, Lady Serena is like not even as um, perturbed by this as you would expect okay. her to be. She sort of just made this decision of like, look, we're just going to go with the flow. We're just going to call, you know, move forward. And if this is there, we're just going to slide right through it. No awesome. Problem. Okay, so then um, just to give a little bit of change of scenery here, let me grab these things. And I'll move you guys over here. So. Okay. So then, guys, what um, I need then is to start with, I think our scene opens with you guys rumbling through these kind of uh, tall, long-leaf pines. Uh, the hog is slowly navigating through it, but you can see up ahead there is a swirling black vortex that has blue lightning playing up and down the uh, storm. A wind is blowing towards you guys as this is uh, happening. Um, Long Walker, uh, I need a, you a, to give us a um, uh, survival check, but it's at a minus two. Please. Okay. Senior. That's you, Brent. That's you, Brent. Yep. Yep. Uh, there we go. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, that's a critical fail. Last two. Yep. Okay. 
Benny? Oh, you can't. can't. Damn it. Yeah, I can't on a uh, critical I, fail. Awesome. I think critical fail on navigation is lost. Oh, boy. Oh, well, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah lost in the storm. I mean, on the uh, storm. Yeah, yeah. So I may Holy have been shit. looking up a bit too much. Yeah, at the just like magic storm. Whoa, did you guys see that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so then um, I need a, uh, let's see here, a notice check from Brandon. Okay. For keeping the watch. Fuck. This thing's gonna break in the middle of this storm. I know it. Okay, D twenty, uh, roll twenty. Uh, there it is. Nice. Okay, okay so one, one success. Yeah. Normal encounters. All right, and then Lady Serena. Here we go. You have no bonus from Long Walker this time. Um, you're traveling in a. Uh, here, let's see how tough this ley line is. Uh, you're the walker there, Brandon. Why don't you give us a one D eight roll, please? Alrighty. Eight. Three. Okay. Um, okay, so this is actually not that bad. What's happening is that there is black roiling clouds that burst along the an overhead at about 60 miles an hour. And as they pass overhead, mm. pounding rain and concussive force like enough to rock the whole thing it's like explosions going off overhead so i'm assuming you guys are all inside the vehicle uh um, yes long yes, walker give us a um what do you call it a uh piloting check at minus two please are you oh, me, oh sorry not long walker. serena lady serena so it's actually a net minus four. Oh wait what why do i get an extra minus two because of the weather Oh, holy shit. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> nice! <Hey. laughs> so, if you want to spend a... Uh... I might as well spend one of my conviction. Yeah, yeah. So, I think uh, this is... Fish fish for a critical success, though. On what? Because if you if you roll, like, roll the d6, uh, if you get a 5, uh, you get a, a crit success. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. It's a D6, right? D6, please. Yeah. Yes! yes! Awesome. And you know what we, I forgot to do, guys? We need to quickly... Uh, so we'll, we'll navigate, we'll, we'll narrate what's happening here. I do need uh, a roll. There was an unsuccessful repair attempt, right? Yesterday? Uh, yes, that's correct. Yep. So correct. Brandon, give us a D6 roll for your supplies. Let's see how many supplies were wasted... Oh, right. Or this is for your uh, spare parts. Let's see here. So, George, you're giving us a D6 roll? Okay. It's fine. Okay. Good. Good. So then I need a D8 roll from... Oh, no. A D8 roll from each of you except for Brent. Brent, you need a D6 roll now for fuel. All right, not a one, not a one. Oh, oh my God, come on. Oh. <laughs> Fuel is at D4 right now. So um, this is before today's travel. Man. Who, who likes to push? <laughs> yeah. I think you're right. There's probably a fuel line that's been uh, burst or maybe one of the spare tanks or something. All right, so here's the upside is because of the critical success uh, that you made, let's see here. You know what I'll do is I will give you a plus two if you wish to push on for another six hours of travel. So uh, I have one thought, um, and it, it thanks, it's thanks to our juicer who reminded me. I could uh, try to help somebody um, get be better at repairing. Well, the, the, oh. the trouble is, is the duration of that is five rounds. And then it'll cost you a lay line, uh, a, a point of PPE every five rounds afterwards to do that. So you've only got 20. You could really only go for uh, 15 times five is 95 plus the original five. It's about 100 uh, rounds. Well, I was thinking for the repair, if we were to do a repair. 
even a repair would take longer I, than like it's a six oh, hour. Oh, it takes. Oh, I see. <laughs> the repair itself takes six hours. I got it. Yeah, I got yeah. it. I got it. Um, How many skills per round? Uh, like right. ten. It's not enough, is what I'm saying. Is like yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I actually right. looked that up for you to see whether the, yeah. that either you, because Lady Serena also has got a way of augmenting her abilities too. She can boost herself. Yeah, yeah. Just I, I forgot that it was it was actually a six hour activity that was happening, and this was just the yeah the you know, consummation of that. So what you uh, you guys have pushed through the storm now, Lady Serena. So. Uh, oh, wait, I do need an athletics check from each of you, too, for the bumps and, and rumbling around. I like the left. Yeah. Oh! Yeah, everyone succeeded. Uh, yeah, awesome. Shit. Lady Serena, better than anyone else. Um, so, what it means is that you guys don't take any fatigue from traveling through that storm. Um, then, uh, when you come out the other side, Lady Serena, the only penalty that you're going to be getting right now is a... Uh, I'll actually, because of the crit success, I'll just give you a flat plus two to it. So it'll be your piloting check at plus two. You want to try and make up some time? Yeah, I think she's really feeling it. This this refocusing has worked for her, and uh, she actually, I mean, I rolled so great on that athletics, it's like she's feeling really good coming out of the storm. Okay. She's ready. Now, here's something that, um, oh no, you guys couldn't uh, couldn't support so we don't have to roll the other ones, just the piloting? Just piloting, and that's only because of the fatigue on the vehicle. Okay, here we go. Come on. So. Four plus one. That does not include the plus two, though, so that gives you a five, which is a success. Oh, that's a success. Perfect. Right, right, that's right, all right. we need. Okay. So... Whew. Here's another upside, guys. So as the f it's going along, it gets dark enough so you actually need to f you put your f effectively the floodlights on. And you're traveling yeah. along through the darkened woods. And as you get to a point where there is a bit of a depression, um, you can see that this at this point, and it's going to be struggling, going straight towards where you guys are intending, uh, there is... Where is it? Where is it? Uh huh. Down in the uh, valley below you, probably about a mile, there is a derelict town. Mm-hmm. So, mm. guys. Now, by the time of the rifts, again, 350 years have passed since the time of the rifts, but supplies can still be found there. Not only things from dating back from before the rifts, but also from the communities that rose and fell and died uh, in the 300 or three centuries between the end of the world and today. You guys have enough of a view here, so you could, uh, um, to be honest, uh, Long Walk, if you want to use your scope, uh, your multi-optic scope between the uh, thermographic and the range-finding qualities of it, you could quite easily at least look and see what's down there. Yeah, sure. I will... Um... <clears throat> give it a I'll check it out sure would you give me a stealth check and I'll give you a plus two because of the, all the woods and whatnot that you have for cover alright uh, and I believe I get an, an additional plus two on that I think I'm gonna that. Uh, yeah okay I'm good okay, so, oh no uh, another two for um, woodsman okay <laughs> <laughs> my cat's breath smells like cat food <laughs> okay, <laughs> so uh, that's a nine in total. So yeah, a raise on it. So uh, in, in the film version, what we would see is just like the slightest move of some um, bushes, and then as the as we pinch in, we can see you completely concealed in there, and you spy through your scope, and the town looks very much like this. There's not much to it. Um, 
The road uh, has been almost completely broken up and reclaimed by nature. The buildings are in the state of collapse. There's no sign of motion down there. That is not to say there's no sign of the inhabitants. Because what you can see is at one of the intersections, right there just kind of before where that church is, you can see in the in the photo, mm -hmm. there is a line of people all seemingly lying down in a row. And as you zoom in a little closer, you can see a couple of things. For one, they're dressed like farmers or people who are living off the land. Plaid shirts, dirty jeans, t-shirts with faded logos on them. And you can see in the chest of every single one of them is a <coughs> massive scorch mark. And the faces of these are all inhuman. These are all dimensional beings. Some elves, some other exotic creatures. Communities of people have found themselves adrift in the post-rifts world often form communities like this, try and live their lives, or their ancestors did, and they've come here. Do they look like they've been dead a long time or fairly recently? They look like they have been dead maybe... I mean, do you have a, um, is it, is it no, just medicine? like, if they're not like stinky and rotten. No, they look like they're sleeping. If you didn't see the gruesome, uh, shot in their chest. Now, Long Walker, would you give me a common knowledge roll, please? All right. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'll build in the minus one into that. Okay. Plus one, minus one. How'd you do? Huh. Nice. 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 Okay. So you sort of, I guess uh, you can feel free to use player knowledge. Who do you think would be responsible for this? I would go and say that would be, I, I'm thinking the coalition. They don't like it. Um, and because it's they're not dead and rotting, they could be around here. So, there's something else that your character would know that you do not. We see your scope moves over to the shadows of some of the decrepit buildings. Would you give me a notice check, please? I think I get a bonus two from the scope. Oh yeah, the scope gives a, a pretty substantial bonus. I should say in your character sheet because I think I cut and paste everything. All right. Did you get a raise out of it then? That's awesome. Yeah, and that's without scope. So, so you can see in the normal vision of your scope, you can't see anything, but you flip it to be into the ultraviolet. And what you can see standing in the shadows <laughs> standing perfectly still as if it were a mannequin from the pre-riffs world are three of these mm. <clears throat> long walker you know precisely what these are these are the kind of colloquial term for them are skelebox these are when the coalition is too lazy or is lacking in forces to occupy or seize a position, uh, they will leave these robotic murdering robots behind. This is the equivalent of Germans mining um, or booby trapping, you know, uh, pianos or other things as they retreat. This is something that was left behind to kill those who would come and help the victims of this town. Mm -hmm. So with that, guys, with that revelation of what awaits you in this town, if you choose to go down there, why don't we take our mid-session break, refresh our beverages, and we'll
we'll come back and see what you guys intend to do. Do you carry on in your mission? Do you deal with this trap that the Coalition has set? And we'll check in with chat as well, too. So we'll be back momentarily. Okay, Kev, I love the fact that you've used those as... Oh, you don't have your headphones on. All right, so let's check my chat here. Hello, everybody. Hope you guys are having a great weekend. Well, here we go. Hello, hello. Uh, Emily, howdy, howdy. Welcome to the uh, post-apocalypse world. Let's see Best of luck. Thank you very much. Abyss, what's going on? <laughs> the Canadian accent, that's great. All right. Bacon, what's going on? Uh, Deadlands got folded into the system somehow. Yeah, actually, Bacon, so the interesting history behind Savage Worlds is that... Uh, so Savage Worlds went... Th or uh, Deadlands went through two different uh, editions of Deadlands. And then they released a miniature game called The Great Rail Wars. And then they realized that, oh, actually, you know, The Great Rail Wars just needs it, which was a simplified version of the Deadlands system. Uh, they then um, took that, added on a little more role-playing components to it, and released it as Savage Worlds. So Savage Worlds actually is a, a direct descendant of Deadlands, and then they've released uh, five versions of Savage Worlds to date. It's either four or five. And then each time is sort of a, a further polishing and adding on to different things and whatnot, and borrowing ideas from indie games, from you know story games, from other games, and... And uh, it, it's come back most recently. They did release a, a Savage Worlds version of Deadlands a couple of editions ago. I think it was the Explorer edition. And then they've also just finished, uh, they're delivering now in the next month, the Kickstarter rewards from the most recent version of Deadlands. And um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. The, uh, it has been a, it's neat seeing the, the setting be cycled basically through the different editions uh, for it, so. Um, I actually had the rights to make a show or movie out of Deadlands going back like 12 or 15 years 
Uh, and uh, I always loved it, and I pitched it to Dimension, which existed at the time, which no longer does. Yep. And they were like super into it, uh, and they were headquartered in, in New York, um, which is important to the story because uh, they were like, "We want to do this." And then, like, literally four days later, it was nine eleven. Oh fuck! And Dimension shut down. The executive I had pitched it to quit. He was like, "I'm." I, he just, you know, and I was so understandably. Um, but yeah, it's a great IP. I can't wait for the new one to show up because the if for no other reason, what they've started doing is in their box sets, they're putting in little cards that have the pregens on it. So it's a, they're about the same size as uh, as these, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, uh, and there's three sets of them for Deadlands now, and it's just like what an awesome way to jump into a game immediately. It's just boom, here's everything you need to play the game. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, that's it's great. A great setting. Uh, okay, uh, then, 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 then. So, what are you guys planning? First off, I can't fucking believe two and a half hours have flown by already. <laughs> I know this game, <laughs> crazy. Yeah, it's a it's a fun game. It's a really, really good game. Yeah. Yeah. And while we're talking about timing, as much as I would love to, I can't play much past our set. Time no, we're too. we're ending at our set time for sure. Yeah, yeah, just no, so no. You know. We'll uh, no, we'll make sure I don't. Uh, uh, even in the one shots, I don't uh, push past that. Uh, okay. Hey, Kev, um, before we start up, um, I I love what you did with the uh, skull bots. I always picture them as you know the coalition sending them in in waves to territories they don't control to kill as much as things before they destroyed. But I never thought of using them as like booby traps or landmine. That's I like that. Oh, it's evil, right? I have a mental note of that. <laughs> There is very little you can think of that's awful that the coalition would not do. You know, they're right. a they can be a cartoonish uh, villain, I think. Um, but I think they're also like one of the absolute fucking worst and the uh, the most satisfying to defeat. You know, oh, so, oh yeah, it's Nazi Germany mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. humanity savior. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty awful. Um, so, guys, um, Long Walker, they do not seem to have spotted you. I don't know how much you with your. Well, you rolled a. Well, you only rolled a, a success, so you know what these are. You know what the the reason. Six, seven, uh, plus the um, scope is plus. No, no, two. no your uh, common knowledge. No, no, you can't you can't see me. Oh, more. right, common yeah. knowledge. <laughs> I'm seeing all sorts of information, <laughs> including is that the DM's notes? What the? <laughs> <laughs> so what? Um, what are you thinking here? Oh, uh, I know what these are. So I'm going to go quietly back to alert the others. I'm pretty sure, uh, and um, we could probably get around them, or it probably be a good thing to kill them because if someone else comes across them there's a good chance they'll be less uh, able to defend themselves or deal with them than we are and long walker is not a big coalition fan uh, neither am i so i'll sneak back to uh the vehicle and pretty much say what i've just said and then i'll add and plus, I'm pretty sure I could get a... Really- it is remarkably in character if Long Walker said that to himself first. You know, <laughs> not really a fan of the coalition. We could probably get around them, but... <laughs> one of those, man. They're just standing there. I could totally pop one of their heads off. <laughs> you could. like, you, you got this thing dead to rights. Uh, they're not even moving. Like, maybe their eyes are... Th- th- and, like, looking back and forth, scanning for anything. You... If this is anything like other uh, coalition tech, these likely have some kind of uh, advanced optics and whatnot, and they have a kind of gun that you've not seen in the hands of coalition soldiers. Mm-hmm. So, when you get back and you describe the situation, again, a reminder, these... That's the coalition. What do you guys think? Are they going to kill the bots? Well, I, I feel an obligation to deal with this. I- I think as, this is. Are we still in our territory, Kevin? No, Correct? you guys are. Uh, let's see here. You're four. Uh, so you're you're about almost a hundred miles out of um, away from 
Uh, there, you're near the border of, um, what is it, uh, Coalition uh, El Dorado and uh, the border with the Federation of Magic. Mm. So these poor fuckers who are the, uh, the inhabitants here, um, they may have been like caught between these two for quite some time. Uh, is there? Do you think there's anyone to rescue, Long Walker? Or are they all dead? Oh no, man! I, they're all dead. But but if we don't take them out, they're gonna take someone else out. Chances are, someone who comes across them, they'll they'll probably be. I mean, maybe they'll be better than us. But yeah, probably not. Yeah, no, they probably won't be as good as us. So they'll probably die. Or we could probably take him up pretty quickly. <laughs> you get a, a point of conviction. <laughs> <laughs> ah, nice. Thanks. Oh, and uh, to spread it around, because of your your commitment to the performance, uh, you get a, uh, <laughs> a conviction as well, George, for your <laughs> masked role. <laughs> I'm just having, I'm just enjoying it, so, but I'll take it. <laughs> I, I say we go for it. Yeah, we've got weapons on our. You know, dude, I, I'm gonna I can sneak in. I get the first shot. I can totally take that head off. Don't don't make noise, there, guys. I'm gonna get one. Get one. Okay. So what? Okay. <laughs> Long walkers, right? No, wait, wait, wait. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, what do you guys plan on doing? I mean, you have an armored vehicle with uh, weaponry on it as well. Um, do you want to try and make use of your own abilities to go in and face these things, or? I was thinking of taking a shot like this. The thing we've got lasers, and I guess we could use a missile launcher. But Long Walker really wants to see if he can take one's head off with his um, with his rifle. Um, and what you and, and what the, we got him? I remember we got a missile launcher too. That would be a good follow up. Yeah, but, <laughs> and I got a I've got a fireball launcher as well. Yeah. I, I think he's trying to take him from Ray. Hey, Walker puts his hand on Brendan. Can, can you make me tingle? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I actually can. Uh, every time he says that, he's got a little patina of sweat on his upper lip, too. It's just... <laughs> can, you, can you make me uh, tingle? What, uh, what's that are you try What trade are you I, trying I to do? I'm spell. I, I'm thinking he would be sort of like a... a oh bit of a speed addict so like mm -hmm. i think the quickness version of the the speed spell like uh reduces his extra action penalty so he'd be like a not the flash but he'd be faster than a normal human in addition to his extra okay speed. i think he would dig that yep uh what is it i just wanted to let you know what the duration is let me see uh duration is the last Number, uh, the duration is, uh, okay, wait, wait. So duration Instant. is five. That's five. Most things are five. So five uh, rounds. Yeah, five rounds. Okay. Uh, it would cost you four, if you want the multi, the one that gives quickness the, to get around multi-action penalty, that'll cost you f uh, two extra uh, PPE. Right, so, so it costs four. you four PPE in total. But you can use mine. And in fact, Long Walker insists on it. Okay. That I draw it from from you. Hold on, yes. hold on. Ugh. I can't remember the page. I don't know. Yeah, I'm looking. The PPA drawing. I think it's after the gear stuff. Okay, hold on here. Oh, uh, siphoning PPE is one sixteen. Okay. Okay. Size plus four, so I think I'm a size zero. You know what I'm going to do, though, Brent, is I, I don't see that. Like, I don't see how you could do that without consequence. You're going to have to make a fatigue check. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it just doesn't make sense to me that you could just si suck off that without any consequence to the... And I don't... I I, I, I have a lot of uh, BBE because of being a ley line walker, so... Yeah. And I and I re, re, recharge relatively quickly, so I don't mind. Uh, and I and I can actually I can I can keep it going right for one more power point after the five rounds. Yeah, another five. Yeah, so it, I'm happy to 
you spend four to give you some speed, make you quick. Okay. So here we go. All right. So uh, spending four total. Oh, one more thing. Yep. Roll two d six for us. Let's see how close the ley line is. Oh, okay, cool. Five. Not close at all. So. Okay. All right. Here we go. A six. Nice. Six. Okay, success. That's a success. Yeah. All right. So what does it look like? Yours is it's a wind trapping to it. Yeah. So uh, I think suddenly like a whirlwind spins up, kind of like from an American Beauty, like you know the the bag. Yeah. Um, and so things kind of go spinning around, <laughs> uh, but it it like settles on to uh, on to Long Walker, uh, and then it like coalesces around him and like enters his his being. Yeah, yeah. And so. Okay. Long Walker so, just grins. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what happens next then, guys? Has Lady Serena or Brandon positioned? Like, you guys are still, again, like, you're a mile away from this town right now. Look at oh, that. Uh, yeah. Which missile launcher was it, Kev? I'll look up the stats. Uh, it's not in range in any event. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, I, I mean, I, I, we have this fireball launcher, so which is also not in range. Um, so my plan... Now, so your characters to... would have known that. Uh, how close do you want to be down into the valley till you uh, take your shot? The missile uh, launcher, long... Brent, on page 103. Okay. A long walker wants to uh, get in about uh, 60 yards away and then crouch down and set up a nice shot. All right. So then what I need from you is if... So if, if you give them the 60 yards, there's no way you can do that in five rounds. <laughs> So you guys would right. have had to, if you're planning on all of you closing in, uh, like getting in closer, then uh, I will need some stealth rolls here. Okay. Okay, are we going to go in on the, you guys coming in on the vehicle or on foot? Uh, Lady Serena, what do you think we should do? I think we just go in on foot. Since we're going into a fight here. Very well. Sammy yeah, I guess we don't stuff. want to damage the vehicle. Anymore, <laughs> any further than we already damaged it ourselves. <laughs> we don't need help making it more damaged. Okay. Then. All right. So you need stealth rolls first for us. Yeah. Yes, please. So make our way it. up there. Yep. Success. Uh, four. So okay. four with uh, Brandon. Okay. All right. Ooh, nice. Good music. Yeah, thank you. Kevin McLeod again. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah, yeah. He can do anything. He's in extremely fly, uh, what do you call it? Uh, flexible. Yeah. Or adaptable. Okay, and then um, oh, that's everybody. That's everybody. Yeah, amazing roll for that. So th four. Okay, so I'm just gonna roll um something as if it's got support. For some notice. Okay. And I'm going to give you each plus two to the totals there as well. So, cool. Lady Serena, you are you don't know where you are. Um, or they don't know where you are. Uh, Long Walker, you're making your way down as well, too. So, this might, oh, hey, yeah. this might uh, break uh, our uh, display here, but hold on. Um, I was wondering, I forgot I had that. Um, can I... Uh, Try. I'm sorry, it's a bit late. I just completely forgot about it. Um, that um, burn. Okay. Look at this, guys. And this should be set up to scale as well, too, if you want to use the measuring thing. Let me put your characters down here. Oh, so. that's sweet. Did you take Google Maps and then put a grid over? That's an awesome idea. No, I drew this. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, of course I do. <laughs> Google Maps. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. You even captured the blurriness of your image. Okay, that's a good job. Okay, let me show you where the uh, the one you spotted is. You guys are coming from the left side here. The one you spotted will be in... There go. There's one in this building here. Mm. Okay. And I'll put some around here. I'm assuming uh, I'll give you the benefit of having reconnoitered a little better here. I, those are three there. Okay. Okay. 
And then there's... Is this us or them? No, this is us, right? If, if you see your name on it... Sorry, I've zoomed out really far. I'm just... Uh, okay, hang on. Let me... <laughs> uh, they do not have little names under it. They don't have bars on them. Okay, yeah, I see us. Okay. Okay. That'll be all of them there. Okay. So, how would you have planned your attack here, guys? There's some nice foliage here, and so... And if you want to use the measuring tool, again, it'll measure properly for you. That's uh, awesome. Okay. Um, Is our weapon distance... Meters. Meters? Yep. Okay. Cool. You guys are probably going to be able to get yourself within about 30 meters of any one uh, Skelebot before things will kick off. I think we would spread out a little. So maybe I'm up this way a little more. Okay. Yeah, maybe, you know what? Or maybe in these woods here. I'm going to make my ice. Gosh, you know what? It's going to be 50 meters. Sorry, put yourself right near a distance of uh, about 40 42 meters away. So you have to be around where I'm showing here, guys. Okay. okay. Look over here. Yeah. Each square is one meter as well, too. Ah, okay. Okay, so... And your your speed is in meters. Remember, you can run as well, too. Some of you have quite high run dice, from what I remember. Okay, so you gotta be a little... Again, guys, beyond... Oh, yeah, see where the arrow is? Go beyond that. Oh, Okay, what button does a stupid arrow thing that I can't seem to? On the left, it's the one that's a circle that looks like it's got a comb in it. Oh, uh, okay. Because I kept just drawing lines. Yeah. That's what I wanted to do. No. <laughs> no, I don't want you to do that either. Go away. Okay. Then, that is the place where you guys reach. Now, let's see here. Who rolled what? Hey, Kevin. Hey, I, Brent. I, I, I forgot that I had burn. Can I try adding a burn? I know it's sort of to your. I missed that. Uh, you're not in combat right now. Mm. Oh yeah, so, uh, wind and fly. Good point. You know what? Here's the thing. I, I'm of two minds here, and I'll let you decide it, Brent. I think for one, you didn't know that these things were going to spot you, but you're also your guy is a badass, juiced up, you know, combat monkey. He would probably think of that. And would probably do everything he could to try and be as hidden as possible. So I'm, whatever way you think Long Walker would be thinking. If he's in combat mode, go ahead and uh, roll that um, uh, that burn dice. Yeah, I'm gonna say he's in combat mode, and also I really want to try out this mechanic. Yep, go ahead. See how it plays out through the. Sure. Adventure. Give us a d6 roll. I'll tell you whether. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I'm oh my god! Yeah, your burn goes down. Oh shit. Yeah. So I'm down into a burn of three. Yeah, but it means that your burn dice is now a D8. Okay. Oh, hey, you guys, when my burn gets to zero, I die. It means you die that <laughs> session, but there is a specific rule called, like, Blaze of Glory in Rifts, where you can do some, you get, like, three bennies automatically, and you die at the end of the session. So, That's cool. Awesome. So what happens is uh, you are... Actually, you are still spotted as well, too. So you and... Uh, Brandon, Brandon, where are you right now? Let's see here. I'm bat down over here. Oh, I see. Okay. So, yeah. let's see here. I have... Uh, okay, so one... I have no idea why I set this up. Oh, I do. Sorry, I get bennies too. Right, right, right. I got one... Can, right. I, can I have my control of my token? You should have control of your token. Yeah. I can't seem to oh, you gotta it. switch switch to the um yeah, the, get off the, the arrow. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay, that would do it. There you go. Uh, don't move your token yet, though. No, I'm just trying. Like, why can't I click on it? Okay. Now, hold on. Uh, so I get. Let's see here. These have shooting of. Oh God damn it! I grabbed the wrong thing. Go. Okay. I don't know if my character would have, like, he would have stuck to the, he wouldn't have come out in the open. Um, then, I don't know why you put your token there, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> you were okay, insistent I... on measuring right up to the, uh, where my thing was, you're stuck <laughs> with it. <laughs> <laughs> so enjoy the lack of cover, pal. Okay, now I get minus two, because you're jacked up, I get minus two to hit you, right? Right. Okay, so I got, uh, 
four, six, uh, seven, eight. I got an eight. Uh, I need eight to hit you. Um, Maybe you were crossing to that big tree and you just. Oh yeah. That's mm -hmm. Okay. What happens, guys, is the fucking hills suddenly become a light with laser blasts coming out of the the town. Um, I have three. I think I can see you there, um, Brandon. But they're at long. You're at long range for those guys, so my okay. chance of hitting you is like a twelve. Mm, and okay. I got one that exploded, but I got an eleven. So there's oh. three that are like. Oh, but oh, mm, yeah. There's gonna be a rate of fires actually, or, or uh, let's go. I need a sixteen actually to hit you because they're all just like filling all those trees around you are exploding uh the wow. earth around you is, is just being completely chewed up and then against um you there uh long walker i think i've got let's see here yep so long range from them as well too and i'll do the same thing so uh i'm fishing for exploding dice right now uh one comes very very close to getting you there nope oh, there's another exploding dice Whoa, another very, very close. Doesn't quite connect. Uh-oh. Two exploding dice. It's exploding again. Wow. No, no! I hit you <laughs> once with a raise. And then the final one. All right. So, Long Walker, you are taking... Uh, there is five of them that are going full auto on you. Mm. And only one hits you. So, huh. uh, you take... Let's see here. Um, damage is 46, okay. Uh, you take, and sixes explode. 10, 13, uh, oof, 19, 25, uh, 30. What's your toughness? Uh, my toughness. That's uh, in the middle. Yeah. Okay, so. What's your toughness? Don't tell me. Don't try and calculate. It. Tell me what your toughness is. Sixteen. What's your armor? I think that I think that might be my. The, well, in the, the armor in the, is five. In the brackets, yeah. it'll, what's the number? Um, under derived stats, it says uh, toughness sixteen. Here's all I need five. from you, Brent. Tell me what your toughness. Then bracket what? Five. That's uh, so, a. And what's your toughness? Fifteen. Bracket five. Sixteen. Uh, six, sixteen. I don't see the bracket, bracket five. Okay, so then. Uh, that means it's uh, 13 is what I'm going against. Uh, one, two. That's a lot of raises. Uh, so let's see here. That's um, uh, 17 makes it uh, one wound. Uh, sorry, hit makes it one wound. 17 makes it two wounds. And a third wound is, is uh, 21. So you're currently facing three wounds. One of the rules for Savage Rest is you can't ever suffer more than three wounds. Now, what you can do is spend a Benny to try and soak that. Would you like to try and soak that? Yes, I would. <laughs> you don't want to so, die? <laughs> <laughs> I would. And Bennies are the blue ones? Bennies are your... No, no. Be, your burn is your blue one. Bennies are the green ones. Okay. Okay. okay now. Uh, okay, so Bennies are not on my sheet. But I think there's one of the other little handout things here that has it on it. Hmm? Where is it? Soak, soak, soak. So I think your soak is a spirit roll, if I remember correctly. Here we go. Yeah, soak rolls are uh, vigor, check. Each success re uh, reduces the number of wounds by one. So, go ahead, Benny, or a long walker. All right, and I will use... Um... I will try my burn again, too. Okay. So here's my vigor roll. Nice! And, um, let's see if I can bump it up with... Yep. So it's two wounds you've ignored right now. One more. You just need another... Fuck yeah. Awesome. So you're shaken. That is it. Wow. But stirred. Yep. So what do you think saved your bacon here? Um... A bit of luck and some fancy uh, footwork as he's not only is he naturally um, 
fast. He's just been uh, juiced up by that quickness spell, so... You could spend another Benny if you'd like to eliminate your Shaken condition as well, too, meaning you could act on the next round. Yeah, I will do that as well. Okay. Awesome. So you are... Yeah, uh, it is a very near thing. Okay, so guys, now we're going to do initiative. So the way initiative works in Savage Worlds is uh, we draw dice. So let me... Um, Shuffle the dice here. Shuffle the deck. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da Shuffle the dice. <laughs> uh, now, for ease, just to be so we're not all grabbing stuff, I hope you guys don't mind. Uh, I will deal for you, if you yeah. don't mind. Okay, so we got... I'm putting underneath your um, your pictures on the screen here. George, you got a two. Uh, Brent, you got a nine, I think. Is that right? Nine. And then Jeff, you got a two. Fuck. And then the Skelebots are acting on a seven. Where are these cards popping up? Oh, At the top. They're kind of in the top, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... Oh, wrong oh, okay. Oh, okay, got it. Okay, and what we do is we go from... Now, hold on. I think, actually, I fucked up, because I think, Longwalker, you've got a quick thing. You draw two, don't you? I take the better. Oh. Uh, I think, no, I think I could be wrong, but I think quick is just if I get more than five. Okay, okay. whether it's in the right name or not, I think I thought you've gotten an edge that allows that. Uh, what is it? Hang on. Give me a second. I got it up here. Uh, quick, quick, quick. Redraw, yeah, redraw if it's five or lower. Okay, so no, you're, yeah, you got a nine. What is that, a five? Nine? Nine. All right, nine. so. Yeah, I think the other one's called level-headed. Yeah, yeah. So, um, are you taking multiple actions this turn? Yes. Okay, so then you're remember that your multi-action penalty will apply to all those. What are you doing? Your turn. You're up first, Longwalker. Uh, well, I'm going to move into cover. Okay. So my movement's three, one, two, three, four, five, six. I uh, remember, isn't it doubled because of quickness as well? Uh, no, actually, this removes the my the uh, multi-action penalty. Oh, wait, quickness. does it only do that, or does it... Because uh, it should do the base effect of the spell as well, right? Uh, oh, perhaps. Um, so what does this speed is do my that? system ignorance. Uh, so, um, success with speed doubles the target's movement, yes. Um, and then we added quickness, so uh, that eliminated the multi-action penalty, so yeah, yeah. both. So, Brian, oh. you can move... What's your speed? My base speed is 14. So you can move 28 squares this round. Wow. Yeah, it's one of the reasons why I wanted to use the map is so that Brent's guy can really have an opportunity to shine here. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Okay. I will be way in the background. Yeah. <laughs> this is so, the, uh, like, not showing his legs is uh, Tim Roth running in the Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, he's for sure on a card, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Hang on, I might actually change that movement then because I did so, I got so much. Uh, I was here, so... Jesus. Yeah. You could move, uh, what do we say, 28? Yeah. 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 So, so this... you could go running up and jump behind a tree over here. without. That's not even running. That's, if you're running, you can go even faster. I want to hide from the other group more, though. So I think if I go, like... You could zip around this building, hey? Look at that. Oh, Jesus. And if you yeah. ran, you could run over here. <laughs> like... What do you want to yeah, do? Yeah, fuck. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to superhero myself and if I can remember to put the thing back on pointer and I'm still in cover. Okay. Uh, and I would like oh, to use my Here's uh, the... my make some so attack. Okay. So you know the specifics of it. Uh, awesome. when you make your choices, awesome. Brent. Thank you, George. Uh, okay, so that is uh, Longwalker. Uh, now, now, did you have any... You said you were taking multi-action penalty. Did you want to take shots? Yes, so I understand. Uh, so long as I don't run, there's no penalty from that. And then I got... Uh, I'll take two actions because the quickness will uh, get rid of that penalty. Um, uh, can you give me a, a small burst template, please? They, they got... No, no, we're not doing... We're not worrying about that because uh, I, I fucking hate people moving templates around trying to squeeze as many things in. If it's... What's the size of the uh, template? Small. Two. You get two things. All right. I will uh, hit these two with an armor-piercing grenade. Okay. I'm going to put your card I just want to check my range here. Okay. Uh, minus two for cover. Oh, fuck. 
Hold on one second. I'm just double checking. Yeah. Yep. Uh, no, you can't. Oh, through like through the window, you're gonna shoot it in. Well, yeah. Are they them. on? They're, they're inside a building. I thought those were the ones that were shooting at me. Nope, the ones that I was measuring from. They see these dudes over here. Oh, okay. Well, then I didn't see those guys. Hang on. Uh, I will. Well, Brent, I was assuming you're shooting it here, guys. It, it's a yeah. one shot, Brent. Let's just like make a decision, do something. Yeah, okay. Okay. I will. You're thirty away yeah. from them. Yeah. So it's thirty with the grenade launcher that I believe. Oh, it's long. Okay, I'll just I'll hit this guy here with two blasts. Um. At short range, but I'm minus two because it's a snap fire penalty, and I'm going to use my uh, mega damage setting. Okay, so it's and a minus two from uh, the cover as well too. So your target number, I think, is a eight right now. Is that right? Uh, yes, that. Um, and what, what's the range? What range is it? Uh, short. Mm, okay, so yeah, eight. And then I will use a burn dice. Hopefully, I do not roll a one again. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to explode. Really a lot more than I thought it was. Okay. And do I declare conviction before or after? After. After you can spend it. So go ahead and make your first shooting check. Here's for the uh, burn, I think I have to do first. But I will. No, no, you, you just have to declare you're spending it and then you can roll. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, shooting. Go ahead. Oh, regular heavy pulse. Oh, and I've got plus one to hit because it's heavy pulse. Sorry, my bad. Okay. Burn. Holy crap! Wow. Oh, you just you know what, Brent? Set it to have um, both damage and skill because it didn't roll a skill. Okay. Uh, if you do that same drop down menu, and then yeah. set the skill to be shooting. Damage also. Yeah, oh, that's okay. What, that's what I did for all the rest of your weapons. So. Okay. Can I just roll a separate shooting right now for then keep that damage? Nope. Uh, okay. <laughs> you knew what the answer was going to be. <laughs> I tried a sweet number though. So. Oh hell, look at that. Okay, so 15 damage, or 15 on your 16. That's uh, So you got a raise. So go ahead and roll yes. damage. I click on roll damage there. All right. In chat. Uh, oh, you did roll damage, it looks like, Brent. I think. The roll oh, damage. Didn't. No, didn't. Go ahead and click on roll damage. Okay, w uh, which one? The second There's one? There's a big button on the. Uh, where? No, no, either, but I guess it says uh, shooting. Either is, either is fine, Brent. Okay. Sure. Okay. And then I get an extra D6 because of the nope, raise? That's included under bonus damage. Oh, okay. It automatically rolls if you got a raise. So that's 16. Uh, so uh, because it's an AP3. Um, that means it is actually not enough. <laughs> it hits this thing's thing. Roll your second attack. All right. Not enough to get through the thing. And so as a reminder too, there are, um, there's either regular uh, characters or aces. These are regular, which means if you get a wound on these things, Brent, you take it down. Oh, okay. Okay, so go ahead and make oh, oh. I'm attacking with an uh, mega damage weapon too. Yep. Uh, two ones. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I was what is happening? Uh, Benny to uh, nope, you not... can't. You can't. On All a... right, right. Yeah. Brent, I need you to yeah. give us a D8 roll, please. All right. <laughs> oh, I'm rolling so many ones. So give it D8, please. I, oh, it says it's rolling. It's stuck. Okay. Oh, there it is. Uh, so there's a mechanical problem. You're now suffering minus two because of the technical difficulty. Minus two when using the device. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So something's going wrong with your uh, device. But you get me your second shot, Brent, uh, with minus two penalty on top of whatever else you were rolling before. Go ahead and make your roll. Just click on that same weapon that you rolled on before. All right. Come on. Five. Uh, that nope. uh, that doesn't include the penalties, right? Right. So I need ten. I think. Okay. To, yeah. Do you want to spend a Benny to reroll that, or spend conviction? Uh, I need to get a. Yeah, sure. I'll spend a, spend a conviction. Maybe it'll okay. ease. Here we go. Eight. Nope. 
I think eight is good enough to hit though, Brent. Okay. Okay, so you hit, go ahead and roll, click on roll damage. Nice! Whoa! Holy, Holy shit! So this thing starts, it's uh, like, it's starting to like, I don't know, like the aim or the shots are kind of starting to heat up in your hands maybe. And even in spite of that extra things, you uh, manage to get one solid shot. One of the Skelebots explodes. Nice. Okay, then it is uh, the Skelebots. Um, I'm actually going to force a multi-action penalty on them because they didn't see where you are. So they're going to take minus two to their shots. They turn towards you there, Brent. Oh god, I just rolled three eights on a D8. <laughs> well, I, I even cover, so... Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, so I, I rolled a, 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 at least a raise on it. So I hit you with one. Um, second guy I, misses. I, um, Brandon. Uh, I got I've, got, I've got that um, plus two to, or minus two to be hit because of my evasion. Yeah, too. but it exploded twice. So I rolled like a 23. Oh. Yeah, that would do it. That'll do it. Okay, Brandon. Nope. And... Okay, Brandon, they're bla blazing away on you, but none of them managed to connect. Uh, Brent, I, I actually only rolled uh, an 8 on my total damage. Your armor. <laughs> that's why you're rolling nice. that stuff. Okay, then it is... Uh, that's all... Oh, I'll start moving with these other Skelebots. Pace is 8. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... The squad is coming out, and they're going to aim on you, Brent. And these ones will stay in cover. Okay, then it's, uh, let's see here, it goes reverse alphabetical order. So it is spades are up first. Brandon, you're up first. Okay. Uh, I just saw the, like, sheer devastation that was wrought by these Skelebots. Yep. So I am casting Protection. Good call. Uh, and I'm going to spend um, an additional power point to give more armor. So it'll be a plus. It'll be four points of armor on a six on a success and okay. six on a raise instead of two and four. Awesome. So here we go. It's going to cost me two power points. Okay. I hit roll. Just waiting for it to show up. Come on. Been a, been a little sluggish today. Roll 20. There it goes. Uh, oh. Yes, so I will have a plus four to my armor. Awesome, so, and it looks like what? Uh, so it is it is ice based. So uh, like this frost appears on my skin, like on my, uh, covering my whole body, my clothing, etc. And it kind of forms a layer of rime. Nice, all hey, around me. George, if you make it yeah. the uh, mega version, it might make you immune to their uh, attacks because you can you'll ignore non mega damage attacks. Aha, uh -huh. so, and were those, did they look like mega damage that, that they were doing? Tough to tell. To me? Okay, tough to tell. Usually it's heavier um, weapons that do mega damage. Yeah, so I, I will have not done it because I didn't say, but if I need, if I do it again, Brent, thank you for pointing that yeah, out. Yeah, it's, it's something, so one of the neat things in the Savage Worlds, they have an idea, a thing called heavy. And basically it's their way of like avoiding you being able to take out a tank with a lucky roll uh, from a pistol. Uh, it just means mm -hmm. that it's ineffective, and they've just adapted that rule for to model what was mega damage in uh, in the Palladium version. Um, your character would have been aware of that. If you want to spend the extra three points uh, for, yeah, I'm fine with that. Totally. What? What? I what, I'll do that. Okay. So it'll be six points of MDC armor. Awesome. Boom. Okay. Um, now that is one neat thing about uh, Rift's characters as well is that you guys are phenomenally powerful. So if you want to have that look like have a, a mega damage kind of thing, like you, you know, giant I like Lich King style ice armor, you can absolutely have yeah. that look that I got. I, I think it actually physically looks like knight's armor, but it's it's made of of ice, like you know, kind yeah. of a glacial ice. Um, and can I then as move as well as part of absolutely uh, it, on my turn? Okay, yep. I only have a pace of six, so I'm not gonna be moving very quickly. So I'm just gonna kind of start skirting around, uh, staying in within the trees here. Okay, go ahead. Uh, then it is Serena, Lady Serena. Just what are you doing, Serena? <clears throat> um, I'm going to use my smite ability. Okay. To uh, cast it on my bolts for my laser rifle. Okay. <laughs> nice. Oh, with a raise too. So that means they do plus four damage. Okay. And it works for the entire cartridge. Yep. So what do we see as you activate <clears throat> this? 
Yeah, I, it, I don't know. It's almost like I think that her ma it's it's magical psychic power, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think it's like um, a, a very meditative sort of thing where it's like um, yeah. And maybe she's using her the same hand that she uh, pulls her uh, Cyber Knight sword from. She sort of grabs the cartridge of her rifle as she's running yep. and uh, infuses it with this sort of psychic energy. Awesome. So then what do you want to do yeah. next? That takes five power points. So that works. Uh, uh, and then I'm going to move. I think it's only smite. I think it's only two, isn't it? So duration is five. Oh, ISP is one. Oh. One, there you go. Okay. Oh, okay, I see it. Okay. And, then, uh, and I can move eight, I believe. Uh, eight mind. squares, yep. Eight. Go ahead. Uh, so, oops, oh, you're in the measuring as well, too. Yeah. All right, and that'll bring us to the end of the round once you finish your move. So let me deal out some new cards here. Uh, for, for Brandon, you're on a 10. Uh, long okay. Walker. Ace. Nice. Woo! Mm, awesome. As uh, Lady Serena on a nine, Skelebots on a seven. Long Walker, you're up first. What are you doing? And are you uh, taking? Uh, I'm going to. Okay, so I'm going to do a uh, multi-action again. Okay. I'm going to move myself up behind this cover, and I'm going to use my grenade launcher that puts me in close range, but I've still got that minus two penalty because of. Um, uh, the malfunction. Yep. I will let you target all three of those with a grenade launcher if you like. Okay, great. So I'm going to try two grenades. Yep. And I've tried... So I think... Two burn. I yeah, think it's only a four then. Uh, like there's Because you're targeting a, a, a space rather than an area, go ahead and make your attack roll. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to figure out... Do I have... One? Okay, no, I've got three burn left. So I will try burn. Okay. Oh, i got two burn. Okay. His, his whole head's going to explode. <laughs> I got a D8, so slash okay. roll uh, eight for my burn. This is for my hits. Nice. Seven, so I have seven to the hit. Okay. And now I'm going to make me shoot and roll. Okay. Oh no, worry. I do it. Uh, hang on. Hang on. I just got to add the shooting to the grenade yeah, roll. Yeah, no problem. Well, let's do this. So you can burn all the time, but it, every time you roll a one, you lose one. And yeah. if they're all gone, you're like, dead. Okay. If you're playing cool. an ongoing campaign, you start with a burn of eight. It just for one shots, they recommend starting with a burn of, of four. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. then also all you right. start getting that big reward earlier on. Okay. Right. Okay, right. so I am now going to shoot with it. I think it's all set up. Okay. Okay, yep. That's a 16, so it's with a raise. Go ahead and click on roll damage. All right. What's the AP of the armor piercing? Oh, AP 16. Awesome. Holy shit. So that's actually against... Uh, <laughs> I'm just going to apply the damage uh, against all of them. Um, 14. Little shrapnel bits of Skelebots go flying up and down the street. Uh, so that was your nice. first shot. You want to do that uh, second shot on the other guys? Yeah, the grenades might not have the range for the other guys. Let me just see what far away I am. 28. Let's do it. Eight. Let me see what the range on the grenades are. Oh, that's a long range. That's not gonna happen. Do it. Do it. Just do it. Okay. You already took mm -hmm. the multi attack penalty. That's what exploding dice are for. Oh yeah. Here we go. Try it again. So uh, all you needed was a four. Uh, long range puts it to an eight. You hit. Roll damage. You know, can nice. I? No, I bet I, I got to spend my uh, conviction point because uh, you said it was malfunctioning. So oh, mine right. too. <laughs> it's your shitty gun. Go ahead. <laughs> your broken, awesome gun. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. Uh -huh. Awesome. Go ahead and roll damage, Brent. I'll apply it against both. Because of the AP, that's incredible. Yep. <laughs> Two more. <laughs> Okay, next up is Brandon on a nine. What are you doing? Uh, so uh, I'm gonna start m by moving actually. Yep. Um, so I'm gonna come. On. Whoops. Yep. I'm also on the range spider. One, two, three, <laughs> four, five, six. <laughs> yeah. I know. 
Cause, well, you set it up to make it awesome, so I, I keep I'm like, yeah, okay, how many meters am I away from these guys? Uh, so I'm just trying to see if I, how close I am. I think I'm not close enough to do what I want to do. I'm not, I'm so close. Um, so, uh, rules-wise, can I move a second time? Is that a run? How if, does if that you run, you roll farther? your, um, increase your pace by your running dice, and you take a minus two penalty to other actions. That's it. Uh... Okay, and I'm not trained in running. So you just roll. Um, yeah, I think it's a D6. There's a dice beside your pace at yeah. the end of it. Oh, I just. I, oh, okay. So uh, I think I will do that. I'm not planning on taking another action anyway because I'm not close enough to use any of my range stuff. Even if I, you know, use modifiers to make it yep. go farther. So I'm gonna roll a pace. Okay. Here we go. It could. It could oh, explode. What just happened? Oh, uh, uh, Brandon Cryos okay. runs for one oh. inch. Yeah, it, it, it clicking that does not do anything. Mm, for some no, it does. Reason. In chat, it says Brandon Kraus runs for one inch. Oh, oh, so I rolled one. Nice. I think what it means is one square. <laughs> yeah. You're the slowest snail in the world. <laughs> exactly. So you can move. Yeah, that's very heavy ice armor. It's so that you, ice armor. That's exactly yeah. what it is. So I move. One the cool thing with that is that, like it it gives you that's that's you getting caught in the open as you're trying to run from cover to cover, right? Yeah, the true. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, so Brandon, yeah. uh, you can move uh, nine, I guess, in total. Your no, your move is a six, right? Six, yeah. So I, I just seven moved total. seven. That's right. I end yeah. up here. That's where I yeah. am. So that's all I can do. That's all you're doing. Okay, then it that's is. That's about. That's yeah. Skellybots. So we got uh, five Skellybots that are firing on uh, <laughs> Brandon now. Good lord, it's a really rough chance of them trying to hit you. Uh, maybe what they'll do is they'll use their. Um, yeah, they're going to change to Heavy Pulse, which gives them a better chance of hitting you. Uh, let's see here. Sorry. And Heavy Pulse would do the mega damage. Uh, let's see here. And is MDC armor a separate statistic from regular armor? No, it just adds no. the quality of uh, mega damage to it, which means okay, that regular right. weapons... Oh, you know what? No, no, no. I'm going to keep using the firing things. That's what I said I was going to do. To be honest, it doesn't matter whether I hit you at this point, uh, okay. because I can't injure you because you're mega damage armor. They will not know that yet. Okay, so... Cool. It really feels like, uh, you know, miniature gaming when I'm just rolling a shit ton of dice. <laughs> right. Okay, so none of them actually hit you anyway. They're just... All five of them okay. are firing, focusing their fire on you exclusively. Uh, wow. Then it is, um, let's see here, uh, Serena, what are you doing? Uh, she moves, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I believe that gets me close enough that I am now mid-range for my laser rifle. Okay. So I will fire. Go ahead. Ah. Aye, aye, aye. Now, do you want to spend any conviction or do you want to spend a Benny to re-roll? Uh, let's re-roll. I have all these Bennies yep. floating around. Heck yeah. Hmm. I'm so small I can't see the change the number. But... <laughs> Sorry, you can zoom in I guess, but... Oh. Jeez. Okay, so phew, you fire. They are aware of you now though, so you're helping to draw fire away from Brandon at least. All right, uh, and I that, think then it's the Skelebots. Well, I've already attacked. I think I cheated and attacked with the Skelebots before I attacked with you. So, sorry about that, Jeff. I cheated. All right. I was invisible, so it didn't matter that much. End of the round. Then, guys, uh, let's see here. We got oh, here we go. Brandon. You're on a four. Longwalker, you're on a ten. Huh? Serena, you're on a six. Skelebots are on a nine. So, first up is Longwalker again. What are you doing, Longwalker? I'm gonna move and try and get a clear shot at those. The other guys have to come out of cover, so this takes me to 12. And there. Yeah, you can move 28 squares. Yeah, I, well, you know what? I don't even have to count that well. I'm gonna use this as cover. Okay. So are you attacking this round, or are you just moving? I think I might attack. I'm just seeing what my uh, close these guys If are. you're just moving, run. Let's see how far you can go. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Point, just Wee! <laughs> yeah. Fuck that. Um, I could probably go behind this car to get like cover, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, let's. Do you have enough movement left, or are you gonna run? Huh? 
Do you have enough movement left to get there? Okay, let me just double check that. That was more than I was expecting, so I was here. So this would have taken me on, 12. Brent, I'll, I'll do this for you. You're at 26. Oh, you if you right click. Oh, no, I can't. If you right click, well, you could uh, roll your running dice. You take a minus two to your actions, but. I don't want to get caught on cover. That one end well. Are you sure? It sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> me less, though. Okay, um, I will. If you right click, you can keep going on a. Yeah, if, if you're measuring one. and you hit, uh, you get a point, you hit right click, it'll hold the point for you, and then you can keep measuring at an angle. Okay. Sweet, I didn't know that. Okay, so I'm medium range from the dude up here. Okay. I will try the grenade thing again because that worked wonderfully. Okay. Um, so I'm medium range, so that's six, right? Seven, and eight then... for your malfunction. So eight. Right. Go ahead. Ooh. Ugh. So that means it deviates. Give me a D8 roll, Brent. Uh... Oops. One. Okay, so it goes a little further up. Um, mm -mm. Oh, it's not on the damn screen either. God oh, dang. You know, like, no one... Uh, players, or DMs rather, are just impossible to please with. It's the one thing they need that time. Like, oh, it's not on here. It's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Like the scatter rules. <laughs> All right. Uh, give me a two d six roll there, Brent. Please. Nice. Oh yeah, that will be two d six times two because it's at medium range. If I type times two, will it work in here or not? Yep. I mean, I could do the math as well, but it's oh nice. No, that did not work. Okay. No. There's absolutely no way that worked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so just, that, no, just, okay, roll two, so, just roll 2d6. Oh, nice. So that rolled 20, that means it deviated 20 meters. So you ran up here and hit, and your thing kind of malfunctions, and it goes flying off and lands somewhere behind those trees. All right. Okay. Well, I've got one more attack, so I will try that again. Okay. What's the uh, capacity of your gr grenade launcher? Sure, this is my last grenade oh, okay. in the launcher. Okay. And then Go I ahead. have to reload. Okay, so... Oh, so it's a... Do you like me to... Here's uh, the top open. one, unfortunately, because you roll your first one. That's a three, so give us another uh, D8 and a 2D6 roll, please. Seven, okay. Oh, it's short. And that's six meters away. Uh, so that would be center is going to be right around there. So I don't think it. Ca What's the uh, radius of it, Brent? Small. Okay, so I don't think that catches them then. <laughs> Your thing is really screwing up right now. Uh, then it is mm -hmm. Scatabout turn. So Scatabouts, we got. Let's see here. Uh, I'll do three on Brandon. Um, none of them have hit yet. Uh, to mm -hmm. actually notice that your armor is protecting you. Right. And... Oh. One of them finally hits you. Mm -hmm. Does nothing. <laughs> I literally don't move. It just goes... <laughs> 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 then we got uh, two we're firing on the... They don't know you're a Cyber Knight yet, Serena. So, because you haven't deployed your thing. Nope. So they're firing on you. <laughs> Does not hit you. Uh, next up is Serena. Um, okay. Uh, I think I have decent cover from here. There's really no point getting closer. I don't need to close to close range. Yep. Because I think that's 24 meters. That's quite a big difference. Mm -hmm. So I'll just keep firing from uh, medium range. Go ahead. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's... So that shot, unfortunately, with uh, cover and distance and whatnot, <laughs> you hit the outside of the thing. Um, do you wish to uh, spend a Benny? Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? We're almost out of time. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Whoa. Oh, 
she's just a terrible shot. Mm. Okay, so not quite good enough. All right, uh, then. Okay, so one of the things you could have done as well, you can aim. Instead of attacking, you could spend your time aiming. Mm -hmm. uh, and the aim yeah. grants you... Oh, it's on... Plus two oh, to I see. So, like, up every other round you fire, yeah. basically? So up to four points of range, cover, call shot, scale, or speed are ignored, or it gives plus two. The range of medium is minus two. The cover they've got is minus two. So you would basically be firing against a four. Oh, okay. Yeah, I might as well do that next turn. Okay. I mean, your character would have known that. You, I'm happy you if you want to aim this turn and attack with that bonus next time. Sure. Okay. Okay. Same cool. difference, yeah. And then uh, one shot. All right, so uh, then it is uh, Brandon's turn. What are you doing, Brandon? Okay. So first I am moving. Whoops. God damn it. Uh, mm -hmm. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going ex to... Actually, it doesn't matter if I'm behind cover or not. And so I'm kind of okay with them aiming at me uh, if it... That, cause them to avoid aiming at my companions. Yep. Um, so I will get there, and I will I'm sure that I'm in range, but I, just to double check, make sure I'm not cheating. Yep. Um, yes. So I uh, am going to cast a bolt spell at this one here. I have to triple the range on it, so I'm yep. going to pay for that. So uh, that one to costing me three power points total. Um, that bolt is like a... a, a a, like a baseball of fire. Yep. Like I'm, it's like <laughs> I'm throwing it. Yeah. Um, Are you so here we go. The damage of it at all? Uh, you know what? Uh, I will do that. So it's another plus two. So I'm spending uh, a total of five power points on this attack. So okay. here we go. Here we go. Okay. Roll a twenty. Come on. It likes the, it likes the suspense. <laughs> Come wow. on, roll twenty. Give us a so, spot. There it goes. Three. Oh, man. Do you have any conviction? Um, okay. Uh, I do have one conviction. Um, or you spend so, Benny to re-roll uh, and then decide what I'm going to I'm gonna Benny because I get a plus two when I Benny. Oh, uh, man. Yeah. 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 Now, so here we go. Uh, all right. So that makes the eight, seven and becomes a nine. So it becomes a nine, which means you hit the raise. Uh, yeah. So what, what did you juice it up to? Uh, so that became a total of uh, 46. 46. Go ahead and roll uh, 4d6 uh, damage. Is, oh, 15. I could, I guess, hit uh, 15. Yep. Uh, does the bolt... Okay, what is the AP on bolt? Or is there any AP? Uh, I don't see any... Uh, no range penalties. Um, but affected by cover elimination, other... Yeah, it just mm, says okay, damage so of the bolt is 2d6. Oh, or 2D6 right, because it's it's one of the um, modifiers. You can add armor piercing to it. Oh, wait, and with a 9, does that mean I got a raise? Yes, so that does... So I get another 1d6. No, no, it's already counted in? No, because well, you rolled your damage manually. Uh, no, that's right. I, it is, I already counted it in. Yeah. No. Oh, right, you got yeah, the so that's Yeah, I did, I did. 15 points of damage. Okay, so um, unfortunately that hits this thing... <laughs> It still seems unfazed by it. Okay. These things are made of All stern right. stuff. All right. Uh, then that is the end of the round, guys. So then, next round. Let's see here. Brandon. Oh, oh, Jesus. Madison. I want a change of dealer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Queen for Long Walker. <laughs> a four for Serena. Skellybots. Queen. All right. And it goes reverse alphabetical order. So Hearts is up first. Long Walker, you're first. Okay, so I'm going to use, I'm going to take a shot at this guy. Yep. So I'm not going to move. I'm going to do my multi-action. So first shot, uh, I'm going to do a shot against him and then second action to reload. Okay. All right, so. And because of my um, uh, edge and my scope, I'm plus two to hit, so it, uh, knocks off the uh, minus two from my crappy sure. rifle. W what edge are you using? Marksman uh, along with the scope. So you, you're including the minus one from the multi-action to aim and shoot, right? Well, I don't know because I've got quickness on me. Quickness only gives you immunity. It only gets rid of it on the mega version of it. He only used regular, which halves multi-action penalties. Right, it, it gets my. Oh, no, I thought no. I got rid of the. Um... Brent, read read the spell on the thing here. It has it. I, I'm not interested in you looking it up right now, Brent. Just take your action. 
get... I can guarantee you that's how it works. Go ahead. I'll so you, take you've that, got then yeah. plus one. Uh, get. Oh, where is it? Regular pulse. Oh, and pul plus one from the heavy pulse. So. Okay. All right. Uh, so in this well, short range or medium range? Short. Okay, then that accounts for the uh, two cover. Um. No, I didn't know they had cover. So yep. four. Okay. Okay, so that's a miss then. Uh, is it gonna make your second shot? Or did you aim? Oh, no, that that I I um, used the marksman, so it was plus oh. one from the plus. Okay, then. Uh, oh, do, it was, mine is so. Yeah. Do you have any conviction left? I know what. I would have still hit. I cor uh, close range. I would have hit because it would be six minus two is four. Six minus two from the cover is four. Okay. Wait, wait. Hold, where, where's the minus two coming from? Uh, the minus two is from the malfunctioning. Yep. And then. But come oh on, hold God. on. Yeah, mo minus two doesn't make it easier to hit. It makes it harder to hit. Right, no, but okay. Okay, let's go this way. The scope can get rid of the cover penalty, so that's, oh, that nullifies. Okay. And then I've got plus one to hit from Marksman. Minus one from... Multi-action uh, penalty? Uh, from the, yeah. Okay. So that's... So minus right. two total. Right. Minus two total, so that, that is a hit. Go ahead and roll damage. Oh, yeah. 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 Holy shit. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. An AP three. Oh, AP three? Let's see here. 13. Yep. So one of them <laughs> explodes. Uh, then it is, I uh, think, Skellybots. Yeah. All right. So I uh, think they're going to switch up their maneuvers. We'll start with uh, we got one shooting at. Uh, long walker, uh, eight, 15. So I hit you with a raise, long walker. Uh, yeah, 15 will hit me. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, then, oops, six explodes, 10, 16, 17, oh. 19, uh, 22 is what I got. What's your, your toughness is a 16, this is AP three, so you're at a 13. Um, I got, I hit you with one, two, uh, three wounds again. Okay, that? well, I will use um, my last remaining uh, Benny to knock it down to to cool. do a vigor roll. Yep. Go ahead. And, and I will use burn on my vigor roll. Please do. <laughs> I keep wanting yeah. to type slash burn instead of <laughs> slash. <dead. laughs> four, any four. four? Nice. Okay, so you got at least yeah. one success. It's great. It's nice. five, nine. So that is one, two. You ignore two wounds. So you take one wound and you're shaken. All right. Okay. Uh, then we got two shooting on. Um, whatchamacallit? On uh, uh, Serena, Lady Serena. Uh, what? So those all miss. The, there's uh, just a barrage of lasers coming out at you again. Uh, the others, um, we actually have one that's moving out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And one that is just going to move forward a little bit, crouch down. And, uh, let's see here. Oh, it's only one shot. Hmm. Okay. They've changed the way that they're firing. It's more of a focused kind of pulse that's coming out. For two of them, the other one is going to run to try and close on you. It seems to be grabbing from its side. There's grenades that are strapped to it. It pulls a grenade out. Mm. Uh, then it is uh, Lady Serena. What are you doing? Ah, uh, well, now I took the time to aim, so I will try and take this guy out that is trying to close on us. Okay. Come on. Nice. Okay, go ahead and roll damage. Come on. Oh, shit. So that uh, is plus four, though. Oh, plus four from aiming, yeah, so it's 20, so yeah. Oh, aiming gives you more damage? No, I was plus four from the smite power. Uh, oh, from the smite, okay, yeah, so 20. No, aiming doesn't. When you have the drop on someone, they're unaware of you, then oh, you do okay. it. Okay, so I'm putting a dot, they are shaken. <laughs> You've hit it, if you hit it again and shaken, you hit it shaken again, it's destroyed. Nice. Okay. 
Uh, then it is um, Brandon. What are you doing? So I have to spend a power point to uh, keep up my um, speed spell. Okay. On Long Walker, so that's the first thing I do. So uh, I don't think that counts as an action that I can nope. tell. No. Nope. Great. Great. So um, <laughs> I can't spend too many of these points because I, I need to keep my armor. Um, so um, I'm gonna move. Okay. Six, so I'll end up about there. Uh, and then just double check. I don't think this guy's that close to me. Oh, okay. So he's only um, 40 meters, which means I would only have to spend an, one extra power point. So uh, I will cast a bolt at him, which is going to be two power points. Okay. Um, yeah, I can't do I want to do greater bolt, but I can't. It's too many power points. Um, but I'll do extra damage. Yep. So it's going to cost me four. So here it goes. Come on. Nice. Six. Yep. Success. Six. Okay. Do you have any... Oh, nice. Oh, it's a bonus damage. Damn it. Uh, uh, yeah, but I do get... That's only 2d6, and I did the extra damage, so I get what, uh, 3d6. Oh, then let's count that. So I get one more attack. 16 as well. <laughs> the armor is what's preventing you from damaging this thing right now. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, so like mechanically, I'll, I'll let you know so you guys know what's going on behind the scenes. These have seven points of armor. So the mm -hmm. toughness is 17. Um, when you were using those uh, armor-piercing grenades, basically it means that their toughness is a 10 then. So if you rolled a 14, you know. Um, right. Yeah, but with the armor, it's just it's tough to get to, through them. Same thing as yep, on the totally. Pump. Yeah, okay, so then it Got is... It. Um, the, and for Jeff, uh, for you, Brent will know this already, and I th you might as well, George, but the way that it works is that your armor piercing is it can reduce the armor component of their toughness save. Uh, so it can reduce it a little bit, but um, it doesn't reduce the overall toughness. So, uh, right, okay. Yeah, that's why we're doing that weird math so to figure out what the toughness is. Uh, okay, so then it is, I think that's it, right? Yep. Uh, yeah. Yep. Here's the turnaround time. Here we go. Brandon, you get a... Oh, Joker! Nice. Oh, yes. Nice. So I'm going to have to reshuffle the deck after this draw here. Queen for Long Walker and a six for Serena. Skellybots get... King. Oh, shit. So... And it, with the Joker, does everybody get a Benny? Is that how it works? I think everyone gets a Benny. Oh, yes. and then, let's see. I think you get plus two to your actions this round. Or maybe that's a, a thing that gives you that a uh, uh, advantage. Let's see here. Um, action cards initiative. Okay, yeah, no, it is plus two. No, so it's, what it is is every characters or groups with a joker... So here's what you get to do, Brandon. You get to act whenever you want in the round, even interrupting someone else's action. And you get plus two to all traits and damage rolls. You don't normally get extra bennies from it, but let's do that because we got 20 minutes left in the session. Well, <laughs> I, I was looking on uh, uh, page 89, uh, player character bennies. Joker's wild. When a player character draws a joker during combat, all player characters receive a benny. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not on yeah. page 92. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, this is on 89 at the start of Benny's. Excellent, yeah, then everyone gets a Benny as well, too. Absolutely. Awesome. Fantastic. Okay. Okay, so then, uh, Brandon, when would you like to act? you want to go right away, or do you want to... Do you want to go later? He's reading. Go! Okay. Do it! <laughs> oh, um, you can spend a Benny to get five power points in Rifts. Mm, nice. Cool. That that will be happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you still get the plus two to your action on the yep. turn you spend a Benny? Yep. Oh, so yeah, it'll stack. Plus four if he spends a Benny. Oh, oh the, the Elan only comes from the reroll, though. Oh, that's what I was yeah. asking. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, George, do you want to act uh, first, or do you want the Skelly bots to act first? Uh, I will let them act first, because if they get closer, it actually helps me. Okay. So we got the one that is shaken is going to make a spirit roll to try and recover. Nope. All right, that's true. I should have done that, but yeah. Okay. That's, that would have been the advantage of going first. Uh, then 
the, let's see here, there's the two that are shooting at you. Uh, let's see here. Uh, nope, neither of them hits. Then we got uh, one shooting at uh, Long Walker. You got cover there, so, and plus your, oh, I rolled an eight. I rolled an eight again. Jesus. I rolled a seven again. <laughs> so sorry, Brent. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, so Stop that's it. a uh, 23 I hit you with. So I got you with a raise, yes. I think. Oh, dang. Oh, I hit a lot. Okay. Um, that means... Oh, no, it's nothing exploding this time. Um, you're... So it's a 13 I'm rolling against because of the armor piercing quality. I don't think I get through your armor. Eight, oh, 10, sweet. Uh, you're shaking. Oh, you're shaking already, aren't you? Yeah. One more wound. You have a Benny. Do you want to try and uh, soak that? I guess so. I will... Uh, yeah, why not? Kay. I'll use my new Benny that just popped up and it will go away. <laughs> easy come, easy <laughs> go. And, and I will still be at one wound. Okay. It'd be really fun in person, too, because like, you'd be using these awesome poker chips, too, right? So it'd be t there'd yeah. be the tactile satisfaction, here. tossing it back yep. in the middle. Yep. Okay, so uh, using burn again, Brent? Yeah, well, I've got, don't, I've got a, I'm shaking, right? So I've got to first make a vigor roll to see if I actually get a turn. No, 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 you, Brent, you, this isn't your turn yet. Uh, you're rolling. I'm asking you if you want to spend a Benny to soak the extra wound you're taking, or do you take it? Oh, no, I, I spent the uh, Benny. Right, so then you need to make a Vigor roll. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, mm -hmm. nine. So, yeah, you get a success. So you, you actually won't take that wound. Nice. Right, sorry. Excellent. Okay, so you're still only at one wound and you're shaken. Uh, then it is... Uh, let's see here. Is that the end of their turn? Oh, I've still got two more shooting at... Uh, I think they're going to try and move out, too, because they're, they're getting shitty shots on you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're starting to move forward as well, too. Um, will they run? Will they run? I think they will. Let's see here. They're going to run an extra two. And they move in that kind of awkward, herky-jerky kind of robot way. Uh, yeah, and they're firing their laser uh, rifles at you. It's just chewing up the, the trees in between. Uh, then it is Long Walker. Unless Brandon is going to go. Uh, you know, I will go. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm just going to move up a little bit. Yep. Coming out of the trees. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, trade in a Benny to get five more power points. Okay. <laughs> I, I need it. Which I'm about to blow um, on uh, my bolt. So I am not only doubling the range, I am making it a greater bolt, which causes 46 mega damage. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. So, and I, I, will, I will then only have one <laughs> left. Okay, so I got a, I got a four, but I, yeah, I got a four. Okay. So that's... Uh, Let me check here. What's one? Mm-hmm. Okay, 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 okay. Ah. Okay, so just to be clear, Mega Damage does not mean that it's going to ignore their armor. It means that they can be affected. Your money might be spent better on armor piercing. Uh, I didn't see... That's on... Oh, wait, I said on, on the... Yeah, the other one, which I printed out. Uh, yeah. You're right. So, um, yeah, so for each power point spent... Uh, grants. grants the power AP two. Yep. So yes, that that, that does make sense. And uh, right, I forgot about this. I was I keep I printed out both pages and I'm looking at. I haven't looked at the. There's a lot of rules part. in this game. Like it's it's a lot of stuff to keep track of and a lot of modifiers yes. on the fly. Which so so, I'll quickly do. So uh, it'll be uh, one two. I'll spend four power points. We'll have I will have spent four power points total, which would give it AP four. Fantastic. Okay, go ahead and roll damage. Okay, so, uh, here we go. You need a 13 to blow it up. Okay, well, I have a, a 10, and uh, can I use conviction on a damage roll? Sure. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> what the hell? Why here not? We go. Come on, 13. Explodes. Yes. Go ahead and roll again. Oh, nice. Okay. I mean, it's, it's destroyed, but... Yes! yes. yes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh! oh. All right, so this thing finally goes off like a propane tank. <laughs> okay, fire and awesome. ice coming down from Brandon. Brandon, were you moving at all, or did you move? I did move, yep. I you did move, away. okay. 
Um, I think then now, Long Walker, it's your turn. What are you doing? Okay, so I need to, at the beginning, right, make a vigor roll so I'm not shaken so I can actually act. Uh, so what you need is a, you need to get a raise in order to act. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I am going to burn. Uh, it's um, a spirit roll to recover from shaken. You can't spend burn on... Uh, well, sorry, for some reason I was thinking it was bigger, but yeah, you're right. My yeah. bad. No, it's because of the, the shake, uh, the soaking wounds thing. Uh, okay. What do I have left? Do I have any conviction left? Um, I got one point of conviction, I think, so I will use that. Okay. Oh, sorry. So that's okay. Uh, uh, five, so you got a success. Do you want to spend your conviction? Go, you need to roll three uh, or higher yeah. on your conviction dice. So it goes D6 roll. Nice. Oh! Okay, you can add this round. What are you doing? Okay. Um, so narratively, I think I, your shot, you're kind of like, they rang your bell with that last shot. And then you can hear some, is that like ringing thing? And then it kind of snaps back into focus. And you can see that Skelebot is bringing its rifle up towards you again. What do you do? Okay, so I'm going to, uh, I haven't had a chance to reload the grenade launcher, so I'm going to try and hit him twice with the laser. Okay. Uh, he's at short, but I'm at minus two because of a mixture of things. Okay. Um, so it's a six right. you need to, to roll to hit it. Go ahead. Yes. And I will burn. That includes your wound penalty? Yes. Okay. You'll burn, burn. of course you will. Whoa. <laughs> okay, so you basically need a four, Brent. Come on, hit it, hit it, hit it. Come on, Brent. Oh, I'm sorry, it's, um, I need a, th a three because it's heavy pulse, so it's plus three to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you... Okay, it's gone. You melt this thing again. Okay, right. um, can, I, can I see anything or am I blocked here? Oh, I think I'm blocked. Yep. You haven't moved you know what? You know what I'll do? Okay, I've got, I can heal, so I can make a natural healing roll at a... No, 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 no. Na natural healing isn't regeneration. Natural healing means at the end of a long rest, effectively, you get to make a... No, no, but the juicer gets a, he's got an ability that I can um, do that. Oh, your sure. drugs? Yeah, my drugs do that. Internal repair system. Okay. Um, uh, you did that. not declare, if that requires an action, you didn't declare multi-action. Okay. Well, I did. I was going to shoot twice for my multi-action. I don't know if I can change what I'm yeah, going to yeah, do. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, as an action, yeah, I get to make a healing roll plus two. Yep. So, I'm assuming I can also spend burn on that. Uh, did you... Hold on here. I can do the same three times, uh, and then I run out of juice or chemicals uh, for the healing. Sorry, I was trying to... Uh, one sec here. Brent, I think... You're, you didn't roll the proper attack roll again for your... It just rolled damage. You just rolled yeah. damage on your... Yeah, the, the attack roll didn't go work properly. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me... It's okay. Shit. Okay, let me repair and restart that. Heavy pulse. It says it should be rolling attack and damage. Nope. You're looking at the wrong one. Here we go. I got a set. Go ahead. Give it a try. All right. There you go. Okay, so now that still hits in spite of the actual uh, minus one extra from the multi-action penalty, right? Right. Okay, so then, the, yeah, we'll just say the damage applied before, so now uh, go ahead and make your healing thing. Oh, yeah. So here's for the burn. Okay, and nice. Nice. here for vigor is for healing, and this is at plus two. So Awesome. So, so yeah, you um, remove your wound. You basically do that kind of like cracking your neck thing, <laughs> and then race out. You can move twenty eight squares if you want this round. Right. <laughs> yeah, you've got you've got another four rounds of that. What, what's the penalty for someone shooting into melee? Does anyone know? Uh, none. Just take, oh, okay. kick your action and let's go. Okay. We're not playing a war oh, game. Sorry, so. I'm on. Um, I I've, I'll just move over behind this bus. I'm good. Okay. And then I think. Yeah, I've already gone with my skelly bots. So I think I just need to reshuffle, guys. Go. Okay. Let me delete our cards. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if I could delete our cards or not. Mm. Well, I never went yet. I'm on a. Six. Oh, sorry, Serena, you're up next. What yeah. are you doing? Yeah, I'm real slow. Uh, I'm aiming. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> awesome. 
All hey, right. Look, I just got to get it in there. All right, so you yeah. race up and duck behind that motorhome, it looks like. Okay, so then we got Brandon on an 8, it looks like. Okay. Uh, Long Walker, you're on an 8, or is that a 10? 8. And Serena on an 8. <laughs> Scotty Bonds on a 5. All right, so we're, let's see here. Reverse alphabetical order. That'll be hearts first, then diamonds, then clubs. So, uh, Brandon, you're up first. Okay. Um, I am going to have to turn in my last Benny for some extra juice PowerPoints. Yep. Yep. Uh, so then, oh, and I have to spend one immediately to to uh, have my uh, armor continue. Yep. So that resets it to starting at five more. And then I will do basically what I just did in the previous uh, turn. Oh, I'm, I'm going to move a little bit. Yep. To, uh, so here. Just double check that, that I can, this is I'm in the right range, but double check. Yep. So uh, I'm going to attack that one right there. Okay. Uh, with AP4. Okay. Here we go. So a bolt of fire goes. Yep. Seven. Successful. Uh, here we go. Rolls and damage. Yeah, you fucker. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right, so it hits it. Um, then it is, uh, let's see here. Next is uh, uh, Serena. You've been aiming? I have been aiming. Uh, come on, laser rifle. Good gosh. Uh, oh, I'm spinning a Benny for yep. sure. Good. There we nice. go. Hit with a race, so go ahead and roll damage. Oh, time. Um, Maybe two. Ah. Actually, that's Three. enough to shake it. So <laughs> sparks fly out awesome. of it. It's not down, but it's definitely injured. Okay. Cool. Uh, then it is Long Walker. Okay. Um, I am finally in position where all my. If so long as I uh, don't move, my penalties have nullified each other. So I'm going to attack this guy here at short range to see if I can finish him <laughs> off and then fall off the other guy. Uh, so let me attack here. Where's my attack? Okay, 13. That's a hit with a raise. Go ahead and roll nice. damage. Okay. Are you shooting the injured one first? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I just shot the other one first, I guess. Yeah, okay. Uh, do you do multi action or not? Yes. Right. So Make your second attack. I'm... Sorry? Make your second attack. Yeah, and this is for uh, burn. Okay. Uh... Okay. Uh, yep. With, with, that's with a raise. So go ahead yeah. and roll damage. Okay. AP is three. Okay, so you need 17 to, to destroy this thing. There you go. Nice. <laughs> Nicely done. All right. Uh, then it is Skellybots, the two last remaining. Um... One of them is... Why am I picking up dice? Uh, I pick up the D20s. <laughs> One of them is going to stop and f starting to transmit something. It's doing that mm. obvious touching its head thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the other is going to focus fire on um, Brandon. Okay. That's a miss. Then that's the end of the round. So last round here, I think, guys, we're pushing up against... Uh, Quick time, so let's be quick. Oh, King okay. for Brandon. Awesome. Nice. Three for Long Walker, which re gets redrawn to be a three. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Good lord. Uh, Jack for uh, Serena and Skellybots. Ace. All right, so Skellybots are up first. That one has finished transmitting. We're going to uh, now it's going to do that pulse fire on Brandon. Oh. Uh oh. I gotta measure it because I had a 15. 30, okay, so it's in long range. Nope, medium range. Uh, so that's plus two. Ooh, I think I hit you, Brandon. What is your, Brandon? Okay. Said, what's your toughness in total? So, my toughness in total, uh, so when I cast my armor spell, it gave me six uh, armor. So that replaces what I had, right? It's not, I don't add it to the armor I had. Add it on. It does. It does stack. Okay, great. So that means I have um, uh, 15 and in parentheses, uh, nine. 
Okay, so this is uh, AP. So 15. Uh, 15 times minus 9 armor. 12. Yeah. Still doesn't get through your armor. No. <sighs> uh, okay. Then it is, uh, but it's very close. Like I came one off from getting through your armor. Oh, oh wow. Uh, and then the other okay. one is going to open fire on um, Serena with a multi f shot here. Uh, misses as well, too. All right, then it is uh, Brandon. What are you doing? Okay, I'm just moving a little. Oh. <laughs> I'm moving a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and I'm going to give some luck to uh, Lady Serena. Mm. Um, so with my last two power points. Okay. So here we go. Four. Nice. So you get uh, uh, your um, whatever trait it is that you used for shooting uh, will increase by one die. So your shooting will be a D10 now, Serena. Oh, nice. Or Serena. Okay. Yeah, Serena. Sorry, I've been saying it wrong. I've seen it wrong, too. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, then it is uh, Serena. So do I... How do I do that to shoot, then? Uh, you Maybe just adjust the dice for the for a moment. On the... Uh, shooting. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll put it down afterwards. It's a D8 now, right? So yep. Said? Yep. Uh, my... No, no, it was D8 before, wasn't it? Wasn't your shooting... shooting? I thought your shooting was a D8, or is it a D6? Oh, wait. And I changed the wild die, not my shooting die. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I'm going to use a Benny and re-roll that uh, anyway. Can't. Just... You rolled two ones. Oh, dang it. Give us a D8 roll. Well... And just, I'm looking back in the chat, it looks like you had a D8 to start with. Did I? Yeah, you yeah. Had, it, should, it should be in D10 for your shooting. So you'd be, the, yeah. Seven. Uh, oh, sorry, a D6 roll, Jeff. Sorry, uh, wrong dice. I'm a dummy. Le D6. Severe <laughs> failure. Oh, man. Again! Sub subtract oh, four. Jeez. <laughs> I think you were pushing the, like the the psionic power you're char like jamming through this thing was just too much for it, so it's uh, malfunctioned. All right, then it is uh, Long Walker. What are you doing? I'm going to uh, see what I can do to take out the guy who was um, doing the transmission. I think it was him. Yep. Um, I'm in short range. I don't think you've got line of sight. To the one that wasn't trans, so the one that was transmitting is the one that's actually in the building still. If you, oh, okay. Yeah, I just don't see how your guy... Oh, sorry, I didn't... Re okay, yeah. I'll, can I hit the other one? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. I will go for him. Go ahead. So, let's see what I can do. Okay. Are you doing one or two shots this round? I'm going to do two, and I'm going to burn. Okay, please do. Ooh. All right. Okay, on 11, it's a hit with a raise. Go ahead and roll damage. <laughs> We should. <laughs> Another one nice. gone. Uh, how does this last? I get, but uh... Uh, you want to try and you remember you can move and then take your second action. So you can move twenty-eight squares if you want to get a better angle. <laughs> yeah, is he like inside? Inside? Yep. Mm. Well, so I'd have to shoot him through like a window or something. Uh, you can't. There's no window. There's a wall. You you do not have line of sight to him. Full stop. Right now, you'd have to move to the front to get in there. The window, the front of the storefront would be broken out, otherwise it would just be regular cover. For now, you just can't shoot through a wall. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna, uh, I'll spend my other action to reload the grenades. Okay. Uh, Brent, it's quit time. Why don't you just run and then make your attack roll? See if we can get oh, this thing yes. done. Yeah. Okay, um... I just go running right up. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Point blank okay. range. Go ahead and make your attack roll. You didn't even have to run, so it's not like. Oh! What? <laughs> <laughs> Your burn is down to a two. Yeah. He's just burning. And your burn dice yeah. is now at a D uh, ten. Wow. Oh, oh, okay. Um, and I'm at minus two. I'm at short range, but minus two to hit uh, because I've moved uh, and because sorry because of the uh, well malfunctioning weapon. Yep. So. Oh. 
five, uh, and if it's got cover, I missed. Yeah, okay, so you go racing up. Oh my gosh. Uh, we want to spend a Benny to re-roll that, Brent? Do you have any Bennies left? I have no Bennies left. You have no Bennies mm -hmm. left. Do you have any Conviction left? I have no Conviction left. I've got <laughs> two friends <laughs> left. Okay, we're going to quit here. I just want to see something, if we can get five. This Skelly bot goes before you. Ace for Long Walker. Joker! You got plus two. Uh -huh. Nice. And then for the Skelly bot, a four. Long Walker? Oh, I guess Serena, do you want to go first, or do you want the... Uh, no, go ahead. You get a Benny back, and you... So everyone gets a Benny back as well, too, because of the Joker. Cool. Yeah, awesome. I, I see where uh, Long Walker is, so... Yeah. Long Walker, you want to try and mow this thing down? Sure. So... Uh... Plus, my rifle is malfunctioning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said D12, now? Uh For my burn? What's that? My burn is at D12? Your burn is a D10. D10. D10, yeah. okay. Yeah, your burn's so at a 2. I didn't think of looking this much further... Burn. I didn't uh, expect to go here. Jesus! I was close. Okay, um, wow. Okay. Holy so shit. This, uh, you know what? I'm going to spend my uh, Benny to re-roll that. I want to raise. That's a hit already, though, isn't it? 16? A 6? Four, four. Yeah, I guess that would be a hit, yeah. yeah. Go ahead and roll damage. Yeah, just kill it. There you go. Yeah. Done. The nice. last Skelly bot goes down, guys. <laughs> awesome. Um, we can. See, I think that what uh, as it stops, you know, you guys are just, you know, screaming and and heaping praise on uh, on Long Walker, but Long Walker's hands are shaking so badly that he has to stop and sit down and lay his gun down to try and bring himself back under control. And I think because you your burn went up by two that whole fight, right? Yeah, I started at four and I'm down to, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so Long Walker, I think that what you're, like one hand just is still trembling in spite of what's going on. And uh, you kind of touch your eye and there's a little bit of blood coming out of it. Because you burst a blood vessel with the extended effort. So, um, sparing a look back at the uh, dead, hold on, let's go back to the, uh, we'll go out with this, uh, well, not fight music, but the, travel music all right and uh guys now uh, we have to shuffle the dice i suppose shuffle, boom um as we uh fade out we uh lady serena still has uh many miles to travel before she gets to her uh, to gets to uh alicia um long walker has been shh, the last call may be coming pretty soon there long walker and Brandon is completely tapped out. Uh, an hour of complete rest will be needed for him to get his, uh, get at least some of his power points back. But uh, guys, any last thoughts of our heroes of what's going to happen in this town? Do you take the time to bury these things? Do you uh, search and try and uh, find some supplies? Some fuel, maybe some repair yep. parts? Oh, yep. Yeah. Take the time to sit down. Enjoy the beauty of the trees. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else want to go for some coffee? <laughs> <laughs> you, just, you just stay here. Uh, three and a half. We actually get up and then join the others in this search. Nice. All right. So somebody, maybe Long Walker, uh, you know, because he's the fastest of all you guys. He to. Well, you tell me, Brian. Do you think that he would be trying to hide the the signs of Last Call? From the guys, because if he if so, I imagine he'd want to like run up and try and get the hog, bring it back down. Give hopefully maybe his hands will stop trembling by that time. I yeah, would... I think probably would have tried initially to calm down and realize that it's not that doesn't work anymore, and then maybe decide to yeah go get the vehicle. Okay, so with uh, you guys left behind trying to see what's happened here. And I guess an open question of whether that uh, Scuddybot managed to get the mat transmission through. You guys just did come through a ley line storm, or a ley, uh, yeah, right. ley storm. So we'll have to see. Uh, so then, guys, with that, we bring the. Uh, we haven't actually seen the demons in the dark woods yet, but we bring <laughs> this session to a close. So for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us uh, for this uh, one shot of uh, Savage Worlds Rifts. Um, do you guys have any, so I think like 
seeing how your character how capable your characters are and what's effective and what's not effective is definitely part of that combat right like seeing mm -hmm. the way that uh and i mean holy shit can a, a juicer burn through or chew through burn quick if you're using I know. so say you have been playing them in the campaign i may have been a bit more cautious using them but still what's that like at eight, if I only burn through them at like once every second session, I'd still only last like a juicer would only last twelve sessions and then, you know, die. Yeah, you'd have to be really judicious with your use of uh, of burn. I mean, it's devastatingly effective. Like your character was a hugely dominant uh, combat force in this, but mm -hmm. at yeah. the cost of two burn. You know, that's yeah. Right. Right. I mean. Even at, that would be at, um, if you started with eight, that would be, you know, um, four sessions and then you'd be dead. I'm thinking a bit more cautiously would give you like 12 sessions. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> like that. Yeah. Or maybe someone who rolls better than me uh, needs to play a juicer. <laughs> you were rolling really well. I think you exploded almost yeah. every single damage dice you rolled. My damage were really good. My hit, my, my burn rolls were really scarily low though. Mm-hmm. What about uh, uh, Brandon? How do the uh, spells or George? How do the spells feel? Uh, I, I, they're really cool, uh, and I love. I mean, I love obviously spellcasters to begin with, as you all know. Um, <laughs> and so I like the idea of the wizard being able to change the trappings of the spells. I didn't do it so much here, but I was, you know, I, I like the idea that I can do that. And it's also just getting used to what the capabilities are. Uh, it's interesting to see that you can adjust spells in these different ways. But it's just knowing what that actually means, and like like when you were saying, pointing out that it would be better to do the AP rather than the mega damage. I was like, oh right, of course that makes total sense. So now going forward, like I totally get that. So it was a, a learning experience, but I, I I can see how cool it is to like have the ability to like manipulate things, uh, you know, along the way and and constantly be doing th different things, even though I have like a like five spells or whatever it is. Yeah. One, one thing with um, Lady Serena that we didn't get a chance to see is, for one, she gets anything that's technology that's firing against her, it gets a minus two to hit because of her Cyber Knight kind of abilities. Um, mm, right. And we didn't get a chance to see her Psy Sword in play, which has an AP of eight. Wow. Yeah. I mean, she just wasn't uh, up close. We just kind of got spotted far away. And so, yeah. But she's fast, James. Or oh, sorry, James, uh, Jeff. Um, I think you've got like, like, uh, base pace of 10? No, plus just a higher dice than most characters? Like, I know they... Uh, well, let's let's do this. Jeff's got to, uh, uh, Jeff said he had to be done straight at 5, so we're, let's uh, wrap this up here, Jeff. If you do need to leave through the outro, I'm, that's fine. Well, then I'll just give you my last two cents. Yeah, yeah. It would be great if the character sheets had a better way of managing all the pluses and minuses that this game throws at you, I think. That's yes. the one thing I'd say about the gameplay on Roll20. And the other thing I would add is every time you do that voice, George, all I think about is uh, Eddie Izzard and his Cantina sketch. <laughs> yes. Darth Vader one. Yes. Yeah. No, <laughs> he, he I'm Darth was... Vader. I run the Death Star. <laughs> totally. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Okay. So with that, guys, let's bring this session to a close. Uh, so uh, for those listening at home, thank you so much for joining us for this uh, special one-shot of um, Savage Worlds Rifts. We hope you enjoyed the uh, overland travel, the uh, scrap with the Skellibots, and uh, the introduction of our heroes. Uh, we, as uh, you know, I really, really tried to write this one to make sure that we could get the whole thing done in one session. Uh, combat takes a lot longer in this than I expected. Uh, the I, th I think that the fight with the Skellibots was two hours, uh, so or yeah. just shy of two hours. So that's that's a long time. I mean, a big fight is going to take a lot of time, and it's a game that's new to all of us as well. Uh, but that yeah. did that was a, a good to know that uh, you would want to set aside a lot more time for uh, for a fight. Um, the uh, reason we did, we played this one as well too is in support of SOS Children's Villages International. Uh, if you look in the description of the video, you can find a link first to the uh, Pinnacle Entertainment Group uh, site. You can find um, more information about Savage Rifts if you want to learn more about that or about Savage Worlds in general. Um, you also found, um, you can find in there a uh, link to something called Heroes Save Villages. That's the charity fundraising campaign 
that we run on the channel. Um, it benefits the SOS Children's Villages International, and this session was made possible by the uh, folks who uh, donated to that. They selected from our post-apocalyptic games a session of uh, Savage Rifts, so it's been a shit ton of fun to, uh, to prep and write this game too, and it's been a lot of fun to run uh, as well. Um, for uh, those listening at home as well, too, if you want to make any donations to SOS Children's or to uh, the Heroes Save Villages campaign, for every $25 Canadian that you donate, you get one chance to win uh, the grand prize or one of the other prizes in our charity raffle. The grand prize is a copy of Beetle and Grimm's Platinum Edition, Icewind Dale, Rhyme and the Frost Maiden. Uh, it's an amazing product, 500 bucks US at uh, uh, new uh, when it was available, but uh, Beetle and Grimm have donated a copy uh, for us to auction off as the grand prize in this uh, raffle. They've also given us a copy of the Silver Edition Icewind Dale Rhyme of the Frost Maiden box set. That is the second prize, and if you don't win those two, you still have a chance to win some other amazing stuff, including a chainmail dice bag from uh, one of our uh, players, a dice tray made by one of our other players, a uh, some zines from our buddy Jason Hobbs, or some uh, loot from the um, Dungeon Musings Red Bubble Shop. I also accidentally bought an extra copy of the... Uh, either I accidentally bought an extra copy of the City of Mist starter set, or they accidentally sent me an extra copy. Whatever the case may be, I... Uh, the I will be uh, tossing that in as another prize as well, too. So there's another prize uh, available for people who donate. And uh, between now and April 1st, 2021, when we're going to have our first raffle, uh, you also get a chance to have a say in our next charity session. Our next charity session will be up uh, fairly soon for voting. Uh, we'll be picking another, another theme. Uh, donors will have a chance to vote to see which of the games we're playing. And then also, we'll have an opportunity to outfit our heroes with extra supplies. Uh, so... That is uh, that. And uh, the best thing is is that uh, not only do you, do you get a chance to win some uh, excellent gaming products, not only do you get a chance to uh, participate in the uh, games that we're going to play and run on the channel, you also get a chance to help out over 80,000 orphaned and abandoned children from around the world. Uh, for those who have donated so far, we've raised to date close to 1,800 uh, for just this calendar year. So a huge thank you to everybody who has donated so far. And um, with that, uh, last thing I'll say is a huge thank you to the players. So George, Brent, and Jeff, thank you so much for playing today. You guys all did an amazing job with the characters. You really made all of them look super cool. And I appreciate you taking the time to play with me. It was super fun. I had a great yeah. time. And I want to thank the people who donated for all the extra gear. That was very helpful. Yeah, definitely. The transport. Oh, <laughs> the yeah. gear was great. I, I killed a bunch of things with that grenade launcher that was totally donated gear. Um, that's right, yeah. We probably wouldn't kill all the yeah. skill buffs without it. Our comms, everything. Yeah. Yeah, the comms, the... Yeah, yeah that, that goddamn other thing. <laughs> awesome. Okay. All right, so then for Usually those... You just needed a pilot or, a, you know, a mechanic or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. honestly, do like, there's a bunch of super, like, kind of combat or cool characters in Rifts, but I think if you were playing a campaign, the single most important character would either be a mechanic... Or a psi operator, or uh, a techno wizard, someone who can fix things. Yep. Like it's, it's my vehicle that. broke down, my rifle broke down. This is all just in one session. Yeah. So. Yeah. I like. I mean, that was crazy that everything was breaking down as often as it was, but it's also kind of you know it's kind of the fun. Like the the because combat encounters yeah. are, are rare are uh, less common in the game. You know, we, what we were talking before we went live that the. Uh, encounters it's only one quarter of when even when there is an encounter which is not every time or every day uh only a quarter of those will be hostile encounters which is really cool so i think yeah. it gives uh it gives it more of a road trip feel to it uh than this and this was no joke of an encounter too like this is you guys oh yeah really had to <laughs> you know Scrap, definitely yeah scrap your way through it so uh with that then for those listening at home if you are joining us during the current crisis we do hope that this finds you healthy safe and weathering the current crisis as well as can be expected uh we hope that we give you a few hours to take your mind off of the troubles of our world and think about the troubles that our heroes get into in the post rifts apocalypse uh until we see you again uh stay safe stay healthy and happy gaming <laughs>